welcome, 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 welcome. It is Sunday. That means it's Warhammer Sunday. There's Warhammer. It's Sunday. There you go. Thanks for watching. Come again next week. I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, welcome all. It is Sunday. It's time for me to work on my Warhammer army. And if you've seen one of these before, you know what's coming. It's two or three hours. I always say two or three hours. It's three hours, basically, of me trying to do some work on my Warhammer army. Uh, the unending forces of the holy contrivance. Uh, and you guys just hang out and keep me company for the three hours. Uh, if you've not seen one of these before, I'm building an army, a Warhammer Imperial army, with dust on it. There's something on his head there. Uh, Imperial Warhammer army. Oh, snapped his aerial off. Never mind. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Uh, yes, it's Imperial Warhammer Army themed on the Principality of Xeon from the Mobile Suit Gundam universe. So all the vehicles and people and dudes and all the bits and bobs are going to have their own unique colour schemes that hark back to the Principality of Xeon and they have Xeon markings and everything else. So that's what I'm doing. I have been for a few months now building bits and bobs. There's no organisation to me doing this army. I'm just randomly building the next thing along. And at some point I'll have some stuff I can go and try and play. Uh, but yes, it's just me hanging out and doing this and you hanging out in the chat. If you are watching this and you can't see the chat, there's chat here on the telly, on the pic telly picture. But that's not the actual chat. There is also live chat where you can do the typey typey and join in. That's on the YouTube page if you're watching this and you can't see the live chat to do your typey typey. Stay there. Do your typey typey. There's a little YouTube icon down here somewhere in the bottom right hand corner. Click on that and that'll take you to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat. And do join in the live chat because there's stickers to give away, which I've forgotten to get out as always. We'll be doing some sticker giveaways later on. Um, as always, if you want to ask me a question, because for the love of dog, I do depend on you giving me stuff to talk about. Uh, please feel free to put your question in chat. Put it in big fat capital letters so I can see the whole the question i might miss it my chat my ipad's over there so i might miss the question i might not but i can't guarantee i'll see it if it's just in little letters so put it in big fat capitals if you want to you can use the super chat that's at the bottom of the chat window it's a little dollar symbol and that will put your chat comment in a big color box and make a little noise at my end so i know you've somebody's made a comment uh as always though i do depend on you give me questions if you can't get access to chat at all or anything like that you can just pop me an email my email address is here at all times fox at modelmakingguru.com i can't point in the right direction the camera's going the wrong way fuck but there it is it's really hard to do this you know because i'm looking from this angle here i'm looking from over here to try and get this to line up with that email address there with the camera that's going that way it's really weird it's kind of you have to your brain has to do three-dimensional processing. It's quite hard. But yes, you can just pop me an email if you want to. Fox at modelmakingguru.com and I'll try and answer all questions. It does give me something to talk about. So yeah, do feel free to ask me questions. As always, I'll crack on with this in a moment. Don't forget, of course, we are still doing the uh, stream boss battle. You can see up at the top there, Aviad Madar is still on 72,894 health points. And the whole point of that is that uh, you can knock his health down by doing super chats, the little symbol at the bottom of the chat window. You can do a tip through the tip jar, which is streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. Or you can just, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you can subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That also takes a little bit of health off. The more you put through as a tip or the more you put through as a super chat, the more of his health comes off. And I can tell you at the moment, the budget, because what happens is all the money I raise through that you raise even, that you raise through that team boss battle, through the super chats and the tips, that goes into a kitty. And then whoever gets him down to zero, that person wins the kitty. Basically, they win uh, Games Workshop or Forge World kits of their choice to the value of the kitty. And at the moment, the kitty is about 100 quid. So right now, there's 100 quid in the kitty. So you can see it's not even halfway there yet. So you're going to win two to 300 quid worth of stuff if you get him down to zero. So get popping your super chats and your tips and your subscriptions and all that through. And try and get his health down. Now, let's have a quick look at the chat before we dive in and see what we're going to be doing. Uh, we have in chat, we have, um, well, Cy Reynolds says, hi, folks. And he was the first person in the chat. But then Pascal Leoverse came in later and says, actually, he wasn't first. Now, we have no proof of that because there was no comment from Pascal. But... I don't doubt it. Pascal's there all the time. The moment you put a stream up ready to go, like five hours later, Pascal's there waiting. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Cy Reynolds and Pascal are in. Welcome to both of you. Dad is in one of your mods for today. Uh, Dad and Chris at Gross Models are both in. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Borrow Models is in. Hello, everyone, he says. Uh, let's have a look. Who else have we got? Uh, Axel Geis. It just needs Redwall. Don't know what that was relating to, but Pascal, uh, uh, Alex is in. Welcome, Alex. 
Uh, we have uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, a lot of you came in just as we were starting. So the half site came in. Hello all, welcome the half site. Mitch Fox, I'm about to hit the gym, but I saw you were on and just wanted to say hi. Thank you very much, Mitch. If you're going to go and do the gym, I don't understand these things because I'm allergic to exercise. So I, I don't understand this this gym thing. Uh, but enjoy yourself, get fit, get healthy, and uh, do come back and watch afterwards. Uh, Gaz Vickers is in afternoon. He says welcome all. Uh, Quano man, bonjour dude, bonjour mes amis. Asseyez-vous, écoutez et répétez. Uh, so everybody's talking about the music. Uh, who else have we got? Do, do, do. Who else came in? James Lorimore. Just made it, says James. Welcome, James. Uh, we have Wayne Haywood came in. Welcome, welcome. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Welcome, Frankie. Package hasn't arrived yet, but I'm sure it will in the next couple of days. Scott Sutherland from Orkney. Welcome, Scott. He says, afternoon all. Uh, do, 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 do. Paul at Team Inept is in. He's another one of your mods. He says, I am the band man. Uh, you see the band man. Uh, yes, T T Paul likes banning people, but only after he's actually sort of mauled them like a cat mauls a mouse. He mauls them and then bans them. He doesn't just ban you. He'll, he'll just, he'll maul you with his paw and roll you around, play with you until then he'll kill you. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, somebody said, little noise at my end. Huh. From Team Inept, don't know what that is. Uh, as always, do let me know. I'm assuming that the sound and video is quite good today. I've tweaked the video a little bit. I changed some settings on the streaming software, and you might actually, I don't know, because I'm not watching the stream, but you might be getting better, better picture quality than normal. I've made some changes, and I'm hoping, because I've made some changes to do Xbox streaming, I'm hoping the picture now is a little less blocky and pixely than it normally is. So I'm hoping that's the case, especially on playback. Because I was going to set up, if, if you don't know, earlier on in the week, this finger, this very finger, was poorly set. It was all swollen and lumpy and I couldn't do anything. And the only thing I could do was play Elite Dangerous. I couldn't do any painting on the models. I couldn't do any Xbox joysticks. The only thing I could do was play Elite Dangerous because on my HOTUS stick, this holds the, the, the throttle stick and the trigger there isn't used. I was very occasionally used to doing that wasn't so bad because that was my natural resting pose for the finger while it was all swollen. So I could actually play Elite Dangerous. So I was going to stream some, but then my finger got better. So I was like, oh, well, well, never mind. Uh, I forgot what was, why I was telling you all that now. Uh, Candy Graham from Mongo is in. Greetings all. Welcome, Candy Graham from Mongo. Candy Graham from Mongo. Paul says, uh, you lot knock the stream boss health down and then I'll win. Not if you don't get him to zero, dude. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, chat has jumped. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where's it gone? Blanca Blanco is in. Hello, lads. Welcome, Blanca Blanca. How is sunny Australia land? Frankie Ortiz, what's up, fellas? First time on live. Welcome, Frankie. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Sam Reynolds says, Poppycock. I don't know why. Pokemon Tom says, Afternoon, Foxy. Hey, Pokemon Tom. Pika Pika. Team Inept says something and then retracts it. You, I don't know what you said, but it was probably hilarious or embarrassing. One of the two. Frankie says, Lol, a package on a Sunday would be awesome. I don't know. You know, DHL. I've had, if it was DHL or DPD, they sometimes deliver on a Sunday, so you never know. Uh, I'm basically a troll with moderating power, says Paul at Team Inept. He is basically a troll with moderating power. I, I, sometimes I regret the decision and sometimes I don't. Uh, Paul says, sounds very inept. Uh, sorry, sorry, sounds very inept. Sounds very Mancunian, but at least it's clear. Now I'm regretting the decision. Hey, up fingers, McFox. Hey, Spid. Spid's in from Scotland land. Uh, what did I miss in the shtick build last night? Uh, says uh, Spid. Uh, uh, TK finished his. Um, Nimsinderin finished hers. Uh, new Boomhut member BNT, I think it was BNT. Um, he he didn't build anything because he's a professional model maker, but he thrust his uh, Mrs. B, his good lady wife, onto the telly to build her first ever model kit, which was a helicopter. Good choice. <laughs> yeah, that was that was interesting to watch. Like I'm going to, I, I said last night, I said starting off with a helicopter as your first ever build is like learning to swim by being dropped in the middle of the Atlantic. But she she carried on with it. She did well. She was good. She enjoyed it. So you know, props to her. And at, at one point, Dave Barker said, if she can build that and enjoy it, then she'll be able to build anything without fear. And it's true. So we're hoping she gets it done. Uh, Blanca Blanca says there have been floods and fires, but not in his area at least. Yeah, because you've just had a massive heat wave and now you're getting all floods and stuff, aren't you? I know it's not near you, but stay safe, dude. Stay safe. 
Um, BNT, bacon, net curtains and tomato. I like the idea of bacon and tomato. Net curtains, not so sure. It's very 1970. Way, genuine lady girls, not lady boys, says Spid. Yeah, we had, uh, we had a female contingent on the stream last night. And I was saying on the stream, it's nice to get some female builders and some female boomer members. Because this hobby is horrendously male-oriented. And it needs needs to shift a bit. Get a bit of equality going in. So I always applaud and encourage uh, girl builders, lady builders, female builders, whatever you want to say. I, always, uh, I like to get a nice mix. I like to get a nice mix. And the funny thing is, of course, because you guys are all in chat and a lot of you have got, like, pseudonyms, you don't have your actual name, a lot of the times, I don't know if you're, a guy, if you're guys or girls. So, I don't know. I could be saying guys or dudes or hey fellas and it could be half ladies. I don't know. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's have a look. Gosh darn Paul says, Spit, I want a BLT now. I know, so do I. I'm starving already. Ten minutes of the stream and I'm starving. Not good. Right, so anyway, nonsense. Let's get all that nonsense out of the way. Uh, so, yes, what are we doing today? Well, if you remember last week, uh, I got this was already primed and I got it base coated in Castellan Green. And what we did was we gave it uh, a base coat of Castellan Green and then I gave it a, a big fat wash of big sticky Nolm oil just to darken everything down to get into the recesses and darken the whole thing. And then I went in and I dry brushed um, Castellan Green back again to get some what I was calling airbrush free post shading. Because we shaded it in black and we did the black null oil wash, it means there are some darker areas in the recesses. And I dry brushed the Castellan Green back on just in the middle of panels to get the ever so slight shaded effect. So around the edge of these panels, it looks a bit darker. It doesn't look like I've just painted it on though. It's got a hint of an airbrush technique, but not quite. Because what we're trying to do, I don't really want to use the airbrush on these as much as I can avoid it. Although I've run out of Chaos Black Spray, so I had to prime this with UMP Primer with the airbrush. But for the actual painting painting, I want to avoid using the airbrush because I kind of hate using the airbrush now. Now I've got used to brush painting. So we're doing that sort of um, airbrush free pre-shading effect and it's come out pretty well but it's nowhere near finished yet because that's just one colour, one colour and a shade we've got more colours to do now for those of you who weren't here last week if you're following along uh, I am using I am going to just move my cards out of the way hang on got all my credit cards on telly <laughs> spoon uh, I am using as, as much as I can I'm going to use basic colour uh, ideas off the Citadel paint app uh, and for this base colour for the vehicle, this remember this is a Xeon vehicle, and I've decided that the Xeon vehicles for the bog standard grunt troops uh, are going to be green. For most of them, they're going to use a light green shade. Because if you look at actual Xeon vehicles, like some of the tanks and stuff, the ground vehicles, they're kind of shades of green. So we're going to have green, and I'm going for uh, not that one, for moss green, which is a really nice sort of light green colour. And it starts off with Castellan, then you've got a shade of Athonian camo shade, but we didn't do that. We did null oil. Then we've got Lauren Forest and Strachan Green. But we're doing it in a bit different way. As always, I'm doing it differently. I'm doing my dry, my dry brush um, airbrush technique. My dry brush um, post-shading technique. So you can get that pre-shaded look without doing pre-shading. So we've done the Castellan Green. Uh, next, we're going to go in with the Lauren Forest, which is the intermediate tone. If you look at all three, there's three different greens. Castellan's the darkest. Lauren Forest is the medium. And Strachan Green is the very highlight. And what we're going to do is basically exactly the same as we've done already, taking uh, the colour and dry brushing it into the centre of panels. And that's it, basically, for this bit. We're going to do exactly the same. So I have the paint here ready. Uh, I'm not using my wet palette for this. Uh, the Chimera is looking badass there, Fox, says JS Idaho. Welcome, JS Idaho. Thank you very much. Got lots to do yet. Uh, I'm not using my wet palette for this because we're dry brushing. I just want to get lots of paint down. So I've got my little Citadel palette pad. It does have its uses. I don't use this for normal painting, but I use it for making glazes and for doing dry brushing piles because I just want a pile of paint. I don't want to thin the paint more than necessary. So, in fact, I don't even know. Oh, for dry brushing, I don't even need that. I'm talking rubbish. I'm talking out my ass. We just need an brush and an dry brushing. So, I've got our paint here, Lauren Forest. I need my helmet of seeing. Uh, I need a swig of the coffee. Wah! I need to put that there. I need a swig of the coffee. Nom, 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 nom. Now, if you follow the traditional, the traditional Games Workshop method with your edge highlighting and everything else, what you would have done is painted this Castellan Green, washed it in Ethonia Camera Shade, then you would have done an edge highlight of Lauren Forest and then a very precise edge highlight on corners 
of the Strack and Green. So it will basically be this colour with some highlights on the edges. We're not doing that. We're actually going whole hog. We're, we're, our layer colour, so this is that was the base colour, Castellan Green. Our layer colour is actually going to layer over the base colour. We're not just going to do edges. Edges. We don't need no stinking edges, senor. So we're going to do some dry brushing. Now for dry brushing, I always prefer for this technique. Uh, and I know you've, if you saw this last week, I've explained it already. But I always like to assume this is the first time you've watched. Uh, uh, Jamie Barron says, Dad, I hope Man City win the football today. And Dad says, thanks, Jamie. Bye, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, Dad doesn't like City. Dad's a Liverpool fan. Uh, let's have a look. So, yes. So I, I've got a selection of uh, little chisel-edged dry brushing brushes. And I like these because they're soft enough to do what I want to do. If you try, it's not just the shape that's important. When you're doing a dry brushing, if you want to get nice smooth colours, you need soft bristles. Some dry brushes have very firm bristles and that's no use because all you're going to do is make scratches and scrapes and lumps of paint. You want slightly soft floppy bristles, but you want a square edge because it just it's just easier for if you want to catch edges. Because there's two ways I do it. You either catch edges like that, which this kind of shape brush helps with. Or you want to do surface circles, which I'm going to do in a minute, for sort of fading. And that's, again, that's ideal. This sort of wedge shape like that, or the square shape. I don't find round brushes that useful for dry brushing, because you need that flat section of paint there. If it's a round brush, you've only got a tiny area at the tip of the brush where the paint is, and that's no use at all. So you want a flat edge, chisel edged brush. Now I've got here uh, <clears throat> some army painter dry brushes, which are really, really nice. They're quite small. And I've also got a selection of Dela Rowney graduate brushes that I got from my local art store years and years ago. Uh, they are the flat shader, the angle shader, and another angle shader. And they're really nice. And it's ironic that they are shaders because that's what I'm going to use them for. <coughs> so, you've seen dry brushing before. Uh, let's have a look. We have the uh, Lauren Forest. And we're going to start with a small brush for the dry brushing because I'm going to do the small panels first. We're going to do these side panels here. So I'll move these brushes out of the vey. We're going to get a little tiny bit of paint on the brush, not much. Just a tiny amount. <clears throat> you don't need a lot for this. I've got a tickly cough today, so you're going to get <clears throat> excuse me, most of it off onto the tissue. But as Duncan would say, you need to work it amongst the bristles. I've got the I've got the brush in just the wrong place here, haven't I? You want to work it in amongst the bristles get very little left and all you're going to do is exactly the same as last week we're going to concentrate if i can get it in the light so i can see it we're going to concentrate on the insides of panels and i'm doing a little circular motions remember i'm not trying to get edges here i'm trying to build up the color in the middle of panels so i'm going for little circular motions but what i'm going to try and do is Try and dry brush this over a smaller area than the area I did last time with the Castellan Green. It's a bit short on paint. Let me get some more paint on there. Because <clears throat> the trick I like to use is the same, I'm just going to do that, is the same method you would use when you're doing a glaze. If you want to get any kind of fade between one colour and another, the trick is to build up the different layers of colour but do it slowly and each layer needs to get smaller and smaller so that what you end up with is in the center here there'll be more dense pigment so it'll be lighter and as we get further out to the edges the pigment will be less dense because there's less pigment there and you'll see the colors underneath a bit clearer and it'll get darker because we start with the dark colors and work our way up so that should be about there. And what you can see now, hopefully. <clears throat> Ooh, tickly cough. Where's that come from? What you can see, hopefully, now is that panel stands like a mile. Now, do keep in mind, <coughs> excuse me, do keep in mind that the colours you're seeing on telly here are actually a lot brighter than in real life. In real life, it's not quite that obvious. This, this green isn't that dark. It's not far off, but this does look a lot darker than this. Uh, than, than the colour you're seeing. I'll start again. This, to you, looks a lot darker than I actually see it here. But this is what we need to do. So I'm going to get this done now. I'll crack on. Do, do, do. A bit more. Uh, now, this is going to be quite boring. 
because we've got a whole tank to do. So we need to talk about things. So I will have a look at the chat in a moment and see if I can find something to talk about in the chat. Uh, if you do need to ask me a question, because I am focusing on this, but the chat is just here. Uh, ask me a question. Put it in big fat capital letters like Alex Geis has just done. I'll answer that question in a second. Put it in big fat capital letters. And I'll have a better chance of seeing it. Or if you want to, you can do, like I said, a super chat, which is the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That puts it in a colour box and gives me a little noise to distract me and tell me there's a comment I need to read. Uh, now, Alex did ask a question. He says, when airbrushing, I get a grainy texture. Any suggestions? Yes, it's very simple. Uh, if your paint is coming out grainy, it means a few things, but all easily fixed. Typically, normally, it just means that the paint is too thick. It's not thinned enough. Theoretically, that's one of the options. It's too thick. This is one possibility. It's too thick when it's coming out the airbrush. Uh, and that's that can be easily solved by either thinning the paint a bit more or dropping the pressure down a bit or increasing the pressure a bit it's also it's it can be sometimes it's too thick but it can be related to pressure so what you want to do is if you're getting grainy texture first thing to do uh, is thin the paint a bit more your paint needs to be the consistency of skimmed milk don't worry about proper mixing ratios and percentages of this and that that's all nonsense just get your paint to the consistency of skimmed milk uh, if it's still coming out grainy then what you want to do is try increasing the pressure a bit first of all because if it's still a little bit too thick then the, if, if the pressure's too low and the paint's a bit too thick it can't push the paint out the nozzle it's too thick for the, for the air to push it out so just upping the pressure a bit can help. You don't really want to go over sort of 20 PSI though. If, you, if you're having to spray paint over 20 PSI, then the issue is that the paint is just far too thick. Uh, you typically want for most acrylic paints or uh, you want to be spraying between 15 to 18 PSI. Uh, for lacquer paints, you probably want between, I don't know, 10 to 15 PSI, something like that, because they're quite thin. If you're spraying enamel based weathering products like uh, streaking grimes or anything like that they're very thin they can go anywhere from 10 to 15 as well and if you're spraying gloss varnishes they're typically between 10 and 12 psi but it does it does depend on your your airbrush and your kit so don't assume those are the absolute values there is variation it, you need to experiment to get the right pressures basically thin your paint to the consistency of skim milk if it's still grainy increase the pressure but don't really go over 20 psi if you can avoid it uh, if you're having to go over 20 psi then it might be that paint is not really the kind of paint designed for airbrushes because that's a bit high pressure there um, but that should hopefully sort out the other thing to keep in mind it might be grainy because it's drying out before it hits the model that's another thing that can happen if it if it dries while it's flying through the air you've gone from spraying paint onto your model to spraying powdered paint onto your model uh, and all you need to do there is just make sure you're not 100 miles away from the model if you're too far away and it's very hot and dry if you know if, if in the room you're spraying it's very very hot and dry and you're too far away then the paint is drying out so that can sometimes be that you're too far away it's too hot and dry or even that the pressure is too high that's what i'm saying you don't really want to go above 20 because you can get grainy paint if this pressure's too high so it takes a little practice, but you'll get there. If you just stick into one brand of paint, you'll kind of get familiar with it. But just make sure the paint's at the consistency of skim milk. And then from that point, just try tweaking your air pressure and see the best air pressure for that paint. It's just a case of tweaking the variables. Eventually, you'll get to feel for it. You get you can have to tweak the pressure between different paints in the same brand. Because some paints are naturally thicker than others. It's just a case of tweaking. Now there is no there is no setting I can truly give you because it varies from airbrush to airbrush. It can depend on your airbrush or your compressor or you know how long the airline is or you know anything like that. So have a play with it. Just experiment. You will find the right setting, so don't panic too much. Um, can you see this question in big fat capital letters? Says Speedy Curo. No, I can't see that. <clears throat> 
Let's have a look. Brett Hold. Good afternoon, super awesome peeps from here on the south coast of the UK. Uh, welcome, Brett. How's your weather down there? Down in the south coast, you always get the best weather down there, so I'm going to assume you've got, like, tropical heat wave at the minute. Compared to us up in Manchester getting all the Ming. Um, Team Inept says, hashtag unpaid advert. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, pretty, uh, he's plugging Chris's live stream. Yes, for those that you don't know, Chris at Gross Models, who is uh, my very good friend and one of your mods today. He also does a Warhammer live stream at 8pm on a Sunday. The Warhamster uh, gives you a break to go and have your tea. So when this stream is finished, go and have your tea. And uh, you can come back and watch Chris on his channel, Gross Models. Uh, I will dive into the chat properly in a moment. I'll get this one side done, then we'll have a quick look at the chat. Now what I'm doing as well, I am actually going along and catching the edges of things. Remember I was I was really focusing on the centre of panels. I'm going to catch the edge of things as well. I may as well do that while I'm here. But I'm not doing an edge highlight like a proper painty, carefully painty edge highlight. Because the one thing I can't stand doing that's a kind of Games Workshop staple technique is edge highlighting. I, I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. I don't like it, I can't do it. It doesn't look doesn't look natural enough but then again you see i'm weathering things i'm not doing just normal clean vehicles so to me i like a more random weathered look so i was trying to avoid edge highlighting carefully like they get their brush and they do all this with no i'd rather get a random dry brush edge highlight if i can that works much better for me okay so i think that side's looking pretty good what do you think? That's that side now. Now it does look again, keep in mind, it looks kind of harsh to you. You've got light green, dark green, light green, dark green, light green. It looks to you, it looks like it's just all straight. It's not that blatant on in real life. In real life, it's a lot more subtle fades. It's just the camera kind of simplifies it into light and dark. But compare it to this side, which was just the base coat with a bit of dry brushing. So you can see where we're going. It's just lightening it up. This bit needs a bit more, I think. Let's put a little bit more on there. Uh, a little bit more you can see the effect we're going for the trick is though with anything like this especially if you have a gap between colors if you're going like dark light dark medium then light once you've done say your base color and you've got the brush dry brushing on there <clears throat> it's very easy to then have that image in your mind and think that's about the right color you want and then when you start adding lighter colors you think oh it's, it doesn't look right now it looked great before don't don't think like that because it's quite misleading because I want this to be quite a, a reasonably light green but I'm so used to seeing it in the dark green that as I start adding the dark green the lighter colors that my brain goes oh you've ruined it now but you haven't it's just because you're used to seeing it darker so don't panic so I'll just get a little bit on this doohickey I don't know what this bit is it's like a, a device of some sort but again we're going to stick with the circular motion and that's that side done. Cool. Give it a quick whiz over there. I'm not too bothered about these bottom bits because they're going to get covered in mud and stuff anyway. And remember, we're just painting the painting the base coat at this stage. We've got loads of other stuff to paint, all the details and weathering and stuff like that. So I just want to get all the base colours down first, purely because I don't want to spend ages painting the tracks and then do all this dry brushing and get loads of paint on the tracks because that would be a, a shame. So I need to get the, sort of the generic green colour down first. Uh, so what I'm going to do, let's do one on this side. Have a quick look at the chat first. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Paul at Team Inept is going to watch Chelsea uh, City on his lunch. Um, which I don't care about because it's football. Feel free. <laughs> it's football. I don't understand any of that. Um, ba -ba let's have a look what's happening in chat. Uh, Rat Pack 30 welcome, welcome. Fox, stop being good. I become jelly. I, I, well, hopefully, if you if you if you try these techniques, you'll be able to be good yourself. Not that you're not good, but you'll you'll be able to be what you think I am. You, you can do it. Uh, when airbrushing, oh, we've done that one. Let's have a look. What's uh, Vallejo is a verb start again. Vallejo Air is a good airbrush paint. Rat Pack Thirty says, don't use Vallejo Primer. No, don't ever use Vallejo Primer. It's terrible. Uh, Vallejo Air is great for airbrushing because it becomes pre-thinned. Um, there are other paints available. If you want, to, if you're learning how to airbrush, then I often recommend something like Vallejo Air, purely because it is pre-thinned. 
for airbrushing. Some of the colours you have to have a little bit of thinner, but for the most part, it's pre-thin for airbrushing, which takes half the work out of it for you. If you're just learning how to airbrush, then using a paint that's already thin enough for airbrush takes half the thinking out of it, and you can focus on just your technique and you know getting confident with the airbrush without trying to figure out how to thin the paint properly. So yeah, that's a good brand, that Vallejo Air. There are other ones out there. Citadel do a range of air paints, but they come in these stupid little pots, which is a pain in the bum. And again, they probably still need a little bit of thinning. So, but experiment. You'll find your favourite paints, ultimately. As a beginner, I would say, whether you're brush painting or airbrushing, I'd always say, experiment. Try different paints and see which one you like the most. Uh, what's next? What else have we got? Uh, Speedy Creator is editing an update on his Project Espresso machine. It's alive! <laughs> Yes, he's rebuilding uh, an industrial espresso machine. I think, is that the one that you're doing? Well, we've got a different one. Do, 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 do. Uh, Brett Holt says, does anyone here stream on Twitch? Uh, I've got a Twitch setup. I found the quality a bit lacking. For when I was doing video game stuff. And then me, Paul and Chris set up Team Inept anyway. Hashtag Team Inept, like and subscribe to do video game streaming, streaming and we've got a thing set up on Twitch and one set up on Mixer. Mixer was a bit better quality, but they were both kind of gash quality. But I have since realised that might be down to, I don't know, something that I can't control. So, yeah. But I have set up um, my computer now because I was going to do some stream some Elite this week and I didn't. Um, I have set up so that if I want to do a stream just by myself... I can actually stream it through the software I'm using now, which is Streamlabs OBS. And that means I can have overlays and I can have chat and stuff and I can get good quality images. But I don't, I'd don't. i rather just go straight to my YouTube because the thing for me is I'd love to stream on Twitch, but my YouTube is monetized. There's no point in me at all streaming on Twitch because it's just, you know, it's my income. I'm, I'm taking wages off myself. I'm in this to earn a living. So, yes, but Twitch is good. I like Twitch. I've got to, I follow Warhammer TV on Twitch. I discovered to my joy there's about a billion hours of stuff on Warhammer TV that I haven't watched yet. You know, the hangout and paint and things like that that I've just missed for the last six months. So I'm going through and watching all those. Here's a question though. Somebody answer this for me. If you watch Warhammer TV, has Kerry left? They've suddenly got other people doing the chat and I'm like, has Kerry gone? I tried looking on her Facebook page and stuff, but I couldn't, on a Twitter and, you know, Twitter and stuff, I couldn't quite figure out. It looks like she's just gone off to do some other job, but I'm not sure. So if anybody watches that and knows, because I haven't watched it for like seven or eight months and I'm catching up. Has, she, has Kerry left? Because I like Kerry. She was quite good and funny. So that's a shame. She had a good banter with the boys, basically. Do -do 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 -do. Edge highlight. Oh, it's moved. It's moved. Hang on. Oh. Teaminette Paul says, Edge highlight always looks too stark for me. Yeah, I mean, it has its place, and it can look fantastic, but where, you know, the traditional Games Workshop technique is to put a nice, clean edge highlight on something, I'd rather actually do paint chipping to suggest that edge. Or a dry brush to suggest the edge, because it's more organic and more natural. So I will do edge highlighting, but it'll be as part of paint chipping when we get this done. And it won't be that neat. Now on figures, yeah, okay, I can see a case for edge highlighting on figures, like say if a painting an Imperial Guard and he's got his chest armour, I might want to pick up the edges, and doing all complicated stuff on there is not as feasible, because it's a little tiny dude. So it might be more feasible on there. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen when I get to the part in Warhammer Conquest when they start teaching you that, because I can't do it, I'll suck at it. Uh, Wayne Haywood says, any recommendations for airbrush, top coat, matte and gloss? Um... I would say before I answer, I would say don't just take my word for it. Do ask everybody in the chat. People in chat, give them give him your opinion. Um, I've tried many different airbrush varnishes. Um, because for a, I've I've always liked using Humbrol's Rattle Can Forty Nine Matte Varnish Acrylic. It's really nice, and you can't screw it up, and it never goes wrong. I've never had a problem with it. But it's a rattle can, and you have to do it outdoors, and you can't do it indoors, and it's a bit. A bit of a pain when the weather's bad so 
I wanted, I've tried for a long time to find a varnish that I can use in my airbrush indoors. Because then I can just, if I need to varnish something, I don't have to wait for a nice dry day. I can just do it. Let's do it. And I tried many of them. And I, coming from, say, the Rattle Can Humbrol 49, which is literally, take the lid off the, off the can, shake it, spray it on the model, put it back inside, done. There's, no, there's as much thinking as you need. Going from that to the, the varnish is where you've got to build them up in thin layers and get the right, thin them a little bit and fart about and you've got to get the pressure right. And it's like, I was like, no, 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 this is rubbish. And all the ones I tried were just so finicky and more often than not, you had to get them just right. Otherwise you got a satin coat instead of matte or you got a lumpy finish. And it was like, oh, this sucks. I couldn't get the hang of any of them. And nothing was wanting, making me want to just not go outside and spend two minutes rattle can it rather than 45 minutes trying to airbrush a matte varnish coat. Um, and then I came across the Ammo by Meg Lucky varnishes. Because I tried Vallejo, I tried the older Ammo varnishes, I tried, uh, which ones? I can't remember. I've tried a few of them anyway, a few different ones. Because there are quite a few out there. And none of them worked for me at all. They never came out right. But then I tried the Ammo by Mig Lucky Varnishes. The matte and ultra matte. And they are really easy to put on. And they look great. Now, they're not super durable. I will be honest with you. The, the, uh, the, the ultra matte and matte, they're not the most durable varnishes in the world. So if you're going to put it on, say, your Warhammer builds. because you And you want to play them on the tabletop. You might not want to do that because they they will just rub off. I've had it where I've painted something, put the matte varnish on it, and just with handling of it, little light handling, the varnish has chipped off. So they're they're not the most durable varnishes, but they are super easy to put on. We've got them here. Let's have a look. Uh, what have we got? We have uh, ultra matte, which is the nice blue one. We've got a matte, which is a little less matte, obviously. And I've also got a gloss and a semi-gloss in there, or satin. Um, and they're really easy. Now, the, the the reason I liked them was, for the first time ever that I've ever come across, uh, it was an Ammo by MIG product that actually told you on the bottle how to use it. And for me, that was like, wow. Because normally, you just get the product, and it doesn't tell you how to use it. And the, the thing with the Ammo by MIG products are, they're very finicky. Like, they're paints, so you have to spray them just right. Um... And you have to get them just right. And it says on the back, basically, spray a light mist coat, let it dry for five minutes, spray the next light mist coat, and just build it up in light mist coats. Now, I found you don't actually have to do that. Because I found what you can do is um, spray on a light misty coat, then just blast it with the air from the airbrush for like 30 seconds or till it just looks dry. 30 seconds, maybe something like that. Then you can go in with the next coat and the next coat needs to be another mist coat and then basically just keep adding thin mist coats until it is matte as you need it and it's the same for the ultra matte as well as the matte it's misty coats they're all mist coat layers uh, and i found it was dead easy just slap it on misty coat dry it off with the airbrush for 30 seconds just the air slap on the next coat misty coat and it was like that's as much thinking as i had to do and it was perfect and it came out nice uh, and that's it. it. It didn't come out satin when it was supposed to be matte. It didn't come out lumpy. Uh, it didn't come out powdery because there was too much matting agent. You have to make sure you shake the crap out of it. Like any matte varnish. And it just worked perfectly. And I've never had a problem with it. Now like I say, it's not the most durable. If you're spraying it on a tabletop miniature and you want to play that miniature, it's going to come off. So I wouldn't recommend that. For that, I would recommend, you know, your your Humbrol rattle cans perhaps and just do them all in one go when you've got a day you can go outside and do it but it looks fantastic and the ultra matte is very very matte so if it's a display model that's going to go on your shelf and you're never going to touch it that's fine but if it's something like this i wouldn't use it on these because it won't it's not durable enough but then again it's, it's not meant to be it's meant to be just more of a visual varnish really with a bit of durability I don't know what colour these are supposed to be, but I know the gun isn't going to be green, but I'll, I'll do the dry brushing anyway. But they are super easy to use. Now, people in the chat, obviously, tell, tell him what your personal preferences are. This is just based on mine, because I've tried many of the others. None of them have been useful to me at all, because they just haven't worked. They've been too finicky or required too much perfection of the mix, and 
blah blah blah. I haven't had to thin those ultra, those lucky varnishes. I just put them straight in the airbrush. Uh, it tell it says what PSI to use, so I use that PSI. It does vary in them, so check the bottle first. And that's it. That's all I've had to do. So there you go. Uh, I'm in the process of starting on Twitch. Says Rat Pack Thirty. Cool. You can make a good living off Twitch. Uh, it's just that because I've already got YouTube and it's already monetized. There's no point me doing my gaming stuff on Twitch because I'm not monetized on there at this point. So I'd rather do it on the YouTube's. Do do do. Uh, for gloss, um, I don't tend to use. I don't. I'm not the person to answer the one about gloss because the only time I ever use a gloss varnish, I, I don't do shiny clean models. So I don't or aircraft that are clean and stuff. So I don't use gloss varnishes. Other than for doing say. Uh, a gloss coat for weathering so you know a utility gloss coat a gloss coat where it's going to get covered up by matte eventually but I'm putting a gloss coat down because I need it to be smooth to do pin washes or streaking or something like that so I don't look for a model that's going to come out looking shiny and glossy like a sports car so when I do that I just use my pledge multi-surface wax or my pledge floor care finish it's now called what pledge revive it Pledge or another place it's known as Clear or Future. It's an old standby for model makers. It's an acrylic floor wax uh, varnish, but it's basically just an acrylic gloss varnish. Uh, and that works for me because I, it, once I've done my weathering or whatever I've done the gloss coat for, it gets covered up with matte varnish anyway, so I don't care. I just need the gloss smooth finish. And it does brush on something. I'd use it in some places for like shiny things, like a bloke's got a sword blade. I might put some Pledge on that just to gloss it up a bit after the fact. Um, but that's all I really use. I haven't really got a, a, a proper model making gloss varnish that I need or have ever used because I haven't needed one basically. Um, but there are things like the Alclad Aqua Clear. There's some people use 2K um, varnishes, but they're lacquers and it's like a lot of hassle just for a gloss finish. But yeah, if that one I would refer you to guys in chat because they probably got a lot more experience using glosses than I have. It's not my field of expertise. Do, do, do. So I hope you can see here the kind of colour I'm building up slowly. It's not a fast process, uh, but it's just coming along nicely. There are some people um, that would just paint the green colour and then do a careful pin wash with the shade just to go into the recesses and round rivets and things just to, to get the similar effect. But I find this gives a more dirty, worn look uh, than just doing a sort of pin wash. What Duncan would call a more focused recess shade on Warhammer TV because they'll either shade the whole thing and then dry brush highlights or they'll do a, what they call a recess shade which is just putting the shade in the recesses strangely enough I, I, I haven't got the patience to do that even though this takes longer I haven't got the patience for that kind of detail work I'd much rather just do this because this gives you a more organic random sort of scruffy look I think I think uh, Blanca Blanca says, do you browse the 40k subreddit? Uh, no, I don't do a lot on Reddit, to be honest. The only time I ever go on Reddit is when there's something links to something on there. I don't really hang around on Reddit much. Just because I've got time. I used to. I've got a, I've got a profile and stuff and all that, but it's just I haven't got time. I've, I'm, I'm too busy filming or updating my own social media things. And... At one point I was doing like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Reddit and uh, about three other social media platforms and I even tried, what was that one that lasted about a year, the weird black and white one, I can't remember what it was called, LO or something it was called, I think tried that for a bit and it was Google Plus and they've come and gone and I was like, you know what, there's just too many things for me to update, I need to pare this down. So I kind of gave it the will to live for a while, but yeah, Reddit I've not, not done for a while. I'm dry brushing these guns, but I don't know what colour these will be, so I'm just covering covering my bases at this point. Poor Mr. Fox Pimpage, says Chris. Wait, what? Uh, Brett Holt is working on the models from the Conquest magazines. Cool beans. I've had another delivery now. I've got, um, I think the last video I did was episodes, what, 11 to 14? I've already got episode, the next four issues rating to get started. And I've since then had the next four issues after that turn up. So I've got a big massive envelope at the side here with like all the issues and a big poster in a tube and a big book because I've got the art book. So yeah, I'm getting a bit behind. I think what I'm going to do with my Warhammer Conquest builds, 
The reason it's taking so long is I'm trying to do wall four issues in one episode, and it's a nightmare because there's so much work to do that it's, it's not necessarily guaranteed that I'll be able to get everything into 45 minutes. If I've got like you know, 10 dudes to paint or what have you. So what I'm actually going to start doing uh, is focusing more on an issue per episode. So I might just more but shorter episodes. So one episode might be issue like 21. Uh, the next episode might be issue 22. And then you might have one where a, a magazine just comes with the paint. So what I'd do is on that episode, I'd just show you what you need to go back and paint from the stuff you've already done with that new paint and things like that. So instead of having four issues in every video, I might just start doing one video per issue. You'll have more videos, but shorter. And that way I can, I, I'm not trying to get everything done in one video because it was getting a bit of a, a pain because you know, I've got other things I need to get on with and painting like, you know, another six pox walkers and three plague marines and four space marines is like it's a lot of work even though it's basic painting so in the end i had to say you know what i'm gonna to have to do bits now rather than all at once so that's my plan anyway that's my plan painting a missile i don't know if the missile will be end up being the same color i don't know but i'll just get it i'll get it highlighted first anyway Get this bit done, and then we'll have a look at chat for swigger coffees and see what's happening in the world. Uh, I'm up, not I'm not up to date with the chat now, so do bear with me. Uh, that's that bit done. I've got to do this bit here. Little doors. So again, you can see we're just just focusing the centre of panels, and it just gives that effect that the darker green colours is the build up of gunk and dirt. And then when we do a final highlight colour, that will be even more focused in the centre of panels. And it will just reinforce that even more. But because we're doing these little circular motions, we get a nice fade from the light to the dark. We don't just get a straight line. And again, do keep in mind, like I said before, that the colour, the grading from light to dark looks a lot more stark on your telly box than it does to me in real life. Because your telly box is a 1080p stream where half the colours disappeared. So it may look a bit like light, dark, light, dark, but it's, it's not. It's not actually that bright. Doo -doo -doo -doo. But the trick is little circles. If you're trying to catch edges, you can go back and forth. If you want to get blending, it's little circles. And I've said this before. When I was a kid, I used to do lots of comic art. And for a long time, what I used to do was <clears throat> pen and ink outline drawings and then colour them in with pencil crayons until I started using watercolours until I learn better uh, and if you want to colour in with a pencil crayon and get a nice colour that doesn't look like you've coloured it with a pencil crayon the trick is little circles and it's the same with brush painting if you want to get a nice nice blend where it doesn't look really obvious then little circles is great because like sanding you basically if you make some brush marks you then cover up those brush marks with the next bits of brush marks that go over them so you just kind of you're applying brush marks over brush marks and you get a smooth, subtle fade. You've got to go very gently. I'm being very. I'm not putting any pressure on here. I'm just going little circles. And this is why you want soft bristled chisel brushes like these because they're brilliant. They've got a lot of paint on the flat edge. The flat edge can smush around and is smushing the paint. Half of the paint is coming off the brush, and half of it is just the paint that's already on there smushing around and blending together. And it is possible to get nice, smooth finishes with acrylics and dry brushing. So when it comes to me doing my Master Grade Cesabe, you're going to see a lot of this. It's going to be a technique I'm going to use. It takes a while to get used to it, to get the hang of it. You've got to get the brushes just right, and you've got to get your technique down pat and get comfortable. Because, like, you know, I can put pressure on where I need it, and I can get a brighter spot. I know where I can increase pressure a bit. And you kind of do it by feel. You do it by... It's almost by, you know, gut instinct. You kind of just to learn... With a, like, with a lot of brush painting, you learn the feel and the feedback that the brush gives you. Like I want to boost the colour in the middle of the panel here. So I just very gently build it up. So if I just go like this, I'll get a straight line. It'll look like ass. But could doing little circles, varying the pressure, more pressure in the middle of the panel, less pressure on the outside, you get a blend where there's no real obvious straight lines or brush marks. It's just just a fade and a blend and it's almost as good as airbrushing it's not as good as airbrushing i've never said that and i've said many times it's never going to be as smooth and 
you know, beautifully baby butt smooth as airbrushing because this is, you're never going to compete, but it's as close as you're going to get. Do, do, do. Now, there are some people that do this with glazes, uh, and I salute them. I haven't got the skills to do that quite as much to get this kind of result with glazes. Some people can. I just, I, I can do glazes, but not that well. The other advantage of this method is sometimes you get like a little bleb there, like I've got a little streak of paint there where it's a bit thick and there's a straight line. That's fine, because it looks like maybe somebody's wiped it, and this darker bit is like gunk and grime. So you do get some happy little accidents as well. We're going to go over these bits here, because these are like big piston things. They're going to be painted, but we'll go over the round bits. Still with the circles. And what you might find sometimes... Uh, is that where traditionally you might just paint this green and then go and do some like weathering with enamels like dust and dirt and streaks and things like that. Uh, that's fine. However, when you get to this point, you may find that thanks to this dry brushing technique, the dark areas look dirty and dusty enough and grimy enough that you've actually achieved the same effect by just doing your base colours and building up the, dunk, the, the gunk by just having that as the dark base colour. So you can actually get to the point sometimes, don't know if this will be the case for this one, but where you've done it and you think, you know what, I don't need to do grime and like road grime layers because they kind of look grimy already. And that's brilliant. And you can save yourself a lot of work, especially if it's for a tabletop model where you don't need to be, you know, it doesn't have to be museum quality. Okay, so that's all those bits done. <clears throat> I need to now quickly do this bit here. I'm going to paint on the dozer blade, this bit's going to be green with lots of weathering, and this bit's going to be metal. There will be lots of chipping and weathering on here, so I'm just going to do it as base green. <clears throat> and I've got to do underneath, but for that I can go for a bigger brush. I'm just going to rinse this one off. Doodle 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 doodle. And then we'll have a quick look at chat. I couldn't really do anything while I was doing that because I don't want this brush to get too dry. If I just sit there and talk to you for 20 minutes while I'm not doing using this brush, the brush would just go all crispy and horrible. And although you can clean it out, it would be kind of knacking me for any more dry brushing with it. So we'll just get that brush rinsed off. Get some more tissue paper. Tissue. And then we'll have a quick look at the chat before we do the next bit. So I've missed a lot of chat. Let's have a look. Uh, Vallejo varnish sucks to be airbrushed, says Pascal the Averse. Um, Brett Holt says, uh, let's have a look. Oh, Spitty Curate says about his coffee machine. Yes, it's the uh, the commercial machine. He's got a commercial espresso maker. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a big Wager machine. Wager. Oh, and actually, I shouldn't have done that because I need this brush for this. I forgot this bit. Well, I can dry it off with a hairdryer. It's no big. But I don't want to sit here all day and do one colour for you. I can, do the, I can do the turret later. I can go back and do that. We'll just focus on this bit now. Uh, let's have a look. Brett Holt confirms that yes, Kerry left Warhammer TV ages ago. She now streams on her own Twitch channel called The Hobby Room. Oh, I did see mention of that. I wonder if that's what she'd done. Um, gone to her own Twitch channel. Yes, because the thing is, you sometimes look at things like, you know, say people that work on Warhammer TV and you think, why would they ever leave? It's brilliant. You know, you know, would Duncan ever if Duncan ever left, you'd be like, why would you leave Duncan? It's everybody's dream to work there. In reality, though, it might not be. When you do something for your job every day, it might become you know, a pain in the bum. It might fall out with people. She may just want to move on and do other things. Who knows? Who knows? Every job has a downside. Uh, Timmy Nepp says, never heard of her before. Is she a good painter? Um, you only ever saw bits of her work because she wasn't a presenter on Warhammer TV. She didn't do any of the tutorials, but she always did the chat and she. She did her own painting and stuff, but she did the chat as well. She was more on the community side, so I think she's a good painter. She saw some. She liked. Uh, I saw some, lots of her uh, uh, tyrannies. They were quite good. I think she's really good, actually. Uh, James Romer, did I get banned for a second, or did I miss something by accident? Uh, no, not that I know of. Paul, have you been misbehaving? Uh, unless Dad banned you, no, you probably just glitched. Hey, I might have banned someone. Says Chris at Gross Models. You didn't ban anyone. Uh, is Duncan Moore on Twitch? No offence to other dude on YouTube, but he ain't no Duncan. Plus he waters down and washes. Duncan says never to do that, says the half site. Um, uh, yeah, you got Peachy and Duncan. Uh, Peachy's Duncan's mate. 
Um, I, I, I'm the same. I, I like both Peachy and Duncan. Uh, I, I kind of think, though, with no disrespect to Peachy, I think because Peachy was on the painting team. He was a, it was a proper Games Workshop painting team <clears throat> before we started doing the videos. So he'd paint the miniatures that you see. Um, uh, his painting is good. I don't think it's to the same quality as Duncan. But then again, they don't paint to their true quality when they do their videos. They've said before, you know, when they paint their own stuff in their own time, <clears throat> they go into a lot more detail. Um, but the stuff they paint on Warhammer TV is just like a basic guide to getting the colour on them. It's like basic tabletop standard. But yeah, I prefer, I prefer uh, Duncan's <clears throat> methods. Peachy's technique for me is it looks good, but he's too stabby and too fast. And it's like, oh, I can't watch. I can't watch it. It's, just, it's weird. It's very strange. I don't know. I like Peachy a lot, though. Um, I don't know if they do their own thing on Twitch. I doubt it because they probably don't have time. Because the Warhammer TV is also on Twitch. They do lots of live streams and stuff. <clears throat> they have once a week or once every couple of weeks, Peachy and Duncan do a live painting thing with a couple of hours where they have a couple of guests. They also do gameplay and other things like that. So I don't think they're actually independently on the, on the Twitch. Uh, yeah, but Duncan is basically God. Yeah, Duncan and Peachy stream on Twitch channel Warhammer TV all the time. Once every couple of weeks is uh, painting with Pete Duncan. Uh, Pete, uh, pff, wow. Let's hang out. It's called Hang Out and Paint with Peachy and Duncan. That's what it's called. And they some, they've done a lot of uh, gameplay stuff of Shadespire and the other one, the Black Tower, whatever it's called. The sort of D&D &D map tile games. Um, I did watch Peachy and Duncan actually playing Killzone where Duncan was uh, uh, um, Black Watch, I think. And Peachy was Ventrillion guards, and it was all to do with Gene Steelers, and they were fighting each other, and it was quite funny. It was quite funny. Space Hamster Z8 says, Hey guys, just checking in here while making fried rice with shrimp. Are we at the point of the stream where everyone's talking about food yet? We are now. Well done. I really want rice and shrimp now. We are now space, says Dad. Spares. Speedy Q8, how to? One, put in airbrush. Two, press squirty button. Uh, how does one get monetized on YouTube, says James Lorimore. Um, the rules keep changing. Um, at the moment, I think you need... I don't know when I did it. I needed 100 subscribers. That was it. 100 subscribers. And from that point, you get... Oh, no, 1,000 subscribers. And you, you have the option then to monetize videos. I think now it's changed to you need something like 10,000 hours worth of film or video or something. I don't know. Or 1,000 hours worth of video. Something like that. Uh, have a look in. If you've got a YouTube, you've obviously got a YouTube channel. Just have a look in the in the sort of help and support area. Or if you go into your channel setup and it'll give you so yeah, you can all the things you can do like monetization, subscriptions, things like that. It'll say whether you're eligible or not and it'll have a little helpful t tool tip there to tell you. Uh, Rat Pack says, I've only used YouTube for anything, but since they're becoming totally Nazi about stuff, I found Twitch to be more for streaming, unless you are many as Twitch are a tad more free compared to YouTube. Um, I don't do a lot of live streaming, apart from this and a couple of stream streams. I don't. Most of my stuff is pre-recorded video. and um, I, I do like Twitch, but I find it totally confusing. Like trying to figure out what I can offer and the emotion, emotes, and the, it's like, what? I just want to stream a video. And also... Every time I go into my Twitch account, I'm bombarded with crap for free crap for game streams. Like, here's five things you can use in Overwatch. I'm like, I don't stream Overwatch. I don't care. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not that keen on Twitch. I could never get my head around it, to be honest. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. So, our uh, chat has jumped all over the place. James Lorimer says, I had a ban message earlier. What's going on? I swear I was being good. No, I don't think anybody banned you. I'm not banned you. I banned somebody earlier this week, but not you. Doodle doodle do. I'm making a moist palette for later on, says Chris at Gross Models. James Lorimer says, Gotta go for a bit. Back soon. Okay, James, see you in a bit. Um, he then says, He used a wet palette, but Fox told me it was too wet. Yes, yeah, so a wet palette needs to be damp, not dripping wet. Your wet palette needs to be. Moist, not not uh, swimming with water, is the trick. It's just damp to keep the paint moistened. 
Um, I believe I can't believe Fox thinks brushing in circles is as good as airbrushing. Says Paul at Team Up. I don't. It's nowhere near as good as airbrushing, but it's a lot less hassle than airbrushing, uh, and it still looks pretty darn good for tabletop models. There you go. So that's what I said. See, listen to my words that I come out of my face. Uh, that was a swimming palette, Chris. That's why I says Dad. Yeah, pretty much. Speedy Cray says, "Has that got out moist? No peas. There'll be no peas in our time." Uh, I like that technique, Fox, says Jazz Idaho. It looks to provide a great result for those of us without an airbrush. That's the idea, it's because not everybody has an airbrush, or everybody, not everybody wants to airbrush. The airbrushing terrifies some people, and I respect that. Uh, right, slightly larger uh, brushings. A little bit more dry brushings, because we've got this area to do, and the, and the dozer blade. Da -da 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 we'll get this bit done. And what I like to do is start off very, very light, because if you've got too much paint on the brush, it's not the end of the world. You've put a little bit of paint on there, you can blend it away. If you've got too much paint on the brush and you're going really heavy-handed straight away, you've just made a mess, basically. There's not enough paint on the brush. Cy Reynolds says... Just had an email from the White Dwarf team. They want to feature my squigs in the reader's model section of the next White Dwarf. Awesome, dude. Kick ass. Did you mail it to them and say, or did they just contact you out of the blue? I mailed my Stormwolf to them once and I never heard back from them and they never featured it. So I was like, right, screw you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well done. If you watch, that's not enough paint. If you watch the uh, the model makers boom hut stream last night, Cy popped in towards the end. Uh, and he didn't have a camera, he had a microphone, so we got to see just his icon, his channel icon, which is a big fat squig face. He just looks fantastic that he's painting, it looked brilliant. So I'm kind of not surprised they want to feature them, dude, because they look kick ass. Come on, give me some colour, give me some colour. God damn you. Give me the light colour, I need it now. Do, 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 do. There you go. Well, I'm having trouble with this brush for some reason. Yeah, they contacted me direct as the painting comp I won with them was the Warhammer World Shop comp. Okay, cool. I thought maybe they just contacted you without you even doing anything. Cool. So obviously the shop sent on pictures of your bill to them. They're like, hey, can we put them in the magazine? Awesome, dude. So it's better than me. Cause I, I actually sent them pictures of my Stormwolf and they, they never actually contacted me back and said, yes, we'll use them. So... Well jealous. Well jelly. They are awesome though. Do po do post pictures up in the uh, in the boom hut if you haven't already. I haven't been in the boom hut since yesterday, so if you haven't already, do pick post them up in the boom huts. Okay, so we have the dozer blade, blade and gefarten off the doors of yeah. Uh, Timmy Nepp says, I'll be all supportive, but I'm jealous. He said it again. He keeps saying that circle brushing is better than airbrushing. Uh, he's just shapist. He loves circles, hates triangles. I don't mind triangles, but I hate rhombi. The rhombus of doom. Rhombi are evil. I don't mind. I don't mind triangles. Triangles are cool. Triangles have their place. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Rhombus of Doom. That's an old Penny Arcade reference, if I remember rightly. Now, you will find that when you do these, use bigger brushes. For some reason, some bigger brushes can sometimes be a bit of a pain to get paint off. You might have to work a little longer. It sounds counterintuitive, but it might take longer to use a bigger brush. I don't know why, it just does sometimes. It's just the way it is. It is kind of counterintuitive, but... If you've got a very big open area, using a bigger brush helps reduce the amount of brush strokes. You could use a little brush, but you do risk getting more, more patches or brush strokes. So, try and minimise that risk. I think elliptical brushing is better than circular brushing, says Spiddy Create.
<laughs> and then Paul says, ooh, elliptical, like a Yorkshire, was it? I've lost it now. A Yorkshire tash. Anybody outside the UK won't understand that. Elliptical, like as a lip tickle, like what a moustache does. Never mind. Paul, you can explain it in the chat. I'll put the onus on you. Everybody look at Paul's onus. Okay, so I'm not too fussed about this bit because this is going to be heavily, heavily weathered. I actually scratched an etched load of scratches. When I was filing it, I put a load of scratches and dents and dings in this to make it look a bit battered. So this bit will be heavily weathered anyway. So I'm not too fussed about the green on here. This is going to be bare metal. Uh, and probably most of the back of the blade is going to be kind of bare. So what I might do is just do a little bit there. Uh, okay, what did I miss? I was making chilli for me tea, says Gazbeck. There's not a lot. I've done the green, some green. Not all the green, but I've done some of the green. That's about it, really. There's lots of like naked people. They all appeared, but you missed all that. So on this bit, I'm not going to be careful. I'm just going to go in. I've got a bit more paint on the brush than normal. And I'm just getting this in the air, because this is going to be covered in dirt and dust, and it's harder to see. So for this bit... I kind of just want to make the light spots a bit more obvious <coughs> because you can't really see them when it's on the tabletop <coughs> excuse me but I want to make them stand out a bit so I'm not being all careful and delicate here this bit I'm just getting the highlights to stand out so where it's dark you can sometimes get a bit more obvious with the dark and light just to make it stand out a bit uh, Gaz Vickers says, congratulations on the 20,000 subs good sir yes uh, thank you to all my viewers I have 20,000 subscribers uh, over now before I do this bottom bit, I shall have a swig of coffee. Yes, I have. I discovered yesterday. I now have 20,000 subscribers. Yes, get in. So thank you to everyone who is a subscriber. <coughs> if you're not a subscriber, why? Do feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the channel and tick the notification bell so you get notified when I do live streams and videos. It is kind of a cool thing. I was I was doing a little happy dance yesterday. I was like, woo, 20,000. Uh, and I can't believe it. I I never thought I'd get to 10,000. Never mind. I mean, I never thought I'd get to 5,000. Never mind 20,000. Now, sadly, um, you don't get anything off YouTube for 20,000 subs. You don't get like any kind of, you know, you don't get an email from them. You get nothing. You get nothing from them. Bastards. You get to 100,000, you get a silver play button. Um, but 20,000, they don't care. They don't care. So, but what I'm going to do to say thank you to all the people who have subscribed and gotten me to 20,000 subscribers. You know, here's to the next 20,000. I do aim to one day have a silver play button to get to 100,000 subscribers. That'd be fantastic. Uh, but what I'm going to do to celebrate this fact in the next couple of days, when I get five minutes just to make a little video, I'm going to do a giveaway. Uh, now, Cy Reynolds knows what I'm going to be giving away, but we'll leave that there. Uh, but yes, I'm going to be doing the big fingerprint there. Hoo Hooray! thumbprint when I was painting it. Uh, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but it is going to be kick-ass. It's going to be kick-ass giveaway. It's going to be a nice, nice bit of stuff I'm going to be giving away. So keep your eyes peeled over the next few days. It's going to be a simple, it's going to be a simple job of putting a comment on our video just to say thank you to everyone who subscribes. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. Um, I owe you everything. I mean, as I've said many times before, this is what I'm doing. I've made this my job now. I've made this my career. And my, my entire source of income is YouTube and Patreon and that kind of stuff. So I can only say thank you. You know, I can never say thank you enough, basically, to my to my supporters and my patrons. Because, you know, you guys are helping me live the dream. I've worked many, many crappy jobs in my life. Crappy, you know crappy crappy jobs and when I had the chance to make this my 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 sole source of income do this for a living it, I didn't know it'd work I didn't know if, it, if I'd make it I, I, I was like you know for all I know six months from now I could be in the job in the job center again looking for a job crappy call center job I didn't know but it was the first time I had the actual chance to give it a try so I thought yeah screw it we'll give it a try and thanks to you know the support of my patrons on Patreon, and thanks to you guys watching and liking my stuff on YouTube, because I make a little bit of money off YouTube as well. Thanks to everybody basically just watching my stuff and liking and subscribing. I'm now making a bit of an income. I'm not making a lot of money, but it's a little bit, and I'm getting there. I've got many, many years ahead of me, hopefully. 
this is a very long term long term plan so yeah i can't thank all my supporters enough i just you know i just make silly videos that show you how to do stuff as lazily as possible and try and demystify the processes somewhat and make them not quite as scary and complicated a little brush again now for this and hopefully i succeed in that i try and show you that even though sometimes you look at these models and they look incredible and you think, oh, you must, people must spend months and months painting these. You must do this for years and learn all these techniques and things. That in fact, a lot of stuff you can do dead easily, minimal effort, dead lazily. At the end of the day, I'm lazy. I, I'm lazy and I get bored easily. So if I can get results that look kick ass whilst being lazy and cutting corners, then it means anybody can and I want people to know how to do that and that's why I do what I do I like to demystify things you know people get people get scared of airbrushing and don't do airbrushing because they think it's going to be too hard and too complicated uh, and that's why you know people look at airbrushing like some dark art and it's not easy but it's not complicated either it's not as scary as you think it is so I'm trying to demystify but that's what I, that's what I'm doing now this is my my income my livelihood and I can't thank all 20,000 of you enough uh, 20,006 or 7 now, I think. So here's to the next 20,000. Hopefully I keep making content that you guys like, enjoy. I know the last sort of five or six months have not been exactly, you know, brimming over with content. But most of you know what's been going on for the last five or six months. Uh, what with various things happening at home here. With the, the heat wave last summer that kind of kept me away from the bench for months. And then, you know, Mama Fox's health, things like that, that kind of put a lot of hammers in and spanners in a lot of works. So, but hopefully, get back to the content now. But I can't thank all of you enough. You're all brilliant. You're all absolutely brilliant. And it's like I've said, even if you just watch my stuff and, you know, click the like button and watch through the advert, I love you just as much as someone who, you know, supports me on Patreon. Every little helps. On that note, if you do watch my stuff, uh, then do consider helping me out on Patreon. The address is down. There's the camera. Hello. Address is there. Patreon.com forward slash model making guru if you'd like to maybe help me out. But if you don't, if you can't, if you don't want to, if you're not able to, that's fine. Just then make sure when you watch one of my videos, if you can, sit through the advert. I know it's a pain in the bum. Because nobody likes the adverts. They all suck. But sit through the advert. It's 30 seconds. And it really, really helps out, helps me out because it helps my, my revenue from this channel. Means I can afford to buy food. Yes. Always a winner. So, yeah. If there's no other way you can help out, just, just consider watching the advert. It's always for something terrible. It's always for, like, web design services and stuff. So, you're never going to be forced into suddenly buying a house or something on the back of it. Don't worry about it. And it's not quite as bad as watching telly and you get some kind of retirement puff advert with like some TV celebrity from 30 years ago where you get you know you join inquire now and get a free crappy pen or a carriage clock really you know, middle class old people adverts right that's what's that on there I've got like a flake of paint on there das ist nicht richtig there's like a blob of paint that's come off the where's that a blob of something gooey. Get off. There we go. It's like a little flake of paint that came off the pot lid like last week and has been sat there all week. I didn't know about. Right. So I think that's done for that layer of paint. We've got a little bit of edge picking out on the edges here. Not too much. We've got those sort of lighter panels covered. So now you can see it's looking a lot more, well, a lot lighter, but it's got it's gone from looking green and dark to lighter green and a bit more dirty. And yet we haven't even done any weathering yet. We've just done shading. So hopefully you can you can get an idea now to see the kind of effect we're going for. I want to see the side of this dozer blade, don't I? So this is one way advantage of doing this is that you can end up, like I said before, you could get to doing all the paint, detail painting and suddenly think, actually, I don't need to do much weathering because the kind of base colour makes it look weathered anyway. I've got a bit more paint on the brush here. I'm not being delicate with this one because it's the edge. 
and this is going to be lots of scraping on it anyway but I'll just get some rough stabby paint stabs in there just to get some scratch marks if you just go in with the brush and stab you get little brush marks and they look like scratches and scrapes which is cool which you really want. so that is that done I'm going to rinse these brushes off uh, give them a bit to dry have a swig of coffee check the chat and then I think what time are we on quarter past four I think that makes it sticker time don't you I think I think you'd agree I think you would agree that makes it pretty much stick time. So let's have a quick look at chat. Where are we up to in chat? Um, tell us about this chili, Gaz Vickers. Chili sounds really good. It's really rainy and cold here, says Candy Ground for Mongo. Yeah, I'm thinking about chili now. <gasps> the only chili I've got is a. Uh, bird's eye chili in the freezer and it's one of those ones you get rice as well so yeah screw that it's not real food bear metal all i can see is a band of bears playing slayer now says ld oh hi ld yeah bear death metal don't know what the conversation was but dad says the home of the astra ellesmere port you know, Dad, whenever I hear the phrase, whenever I hear Els, uh, Ellesmere Port, and I know it's not right, I know it's not correct, but all I can hear is, ring Eileen Bilton on 0800, and I don't know why, because it wasn't Ellesmere Port. She was like the secretary for some development company. Anybody in the UK will remember the name Eileen Bilton. Who apparently is still going. She runs her own business now, her own development company. <laughs> she started off as just the one person that answered the phone for some company or other. Um, 20,000 subs. Why are only 38 watching live? Come on, everyone, says Chris at Gross Models. I know. I don't, I don't panic too much. I don't panic. Uh, a lot of people don't know to press the bell. If you are a subscriber to the channel and you're watching now, by the way, if you're watching this, even if you're not watching this live, don't forget. And I, I keep forgetting to tell people this as often as possible. Um, and this is true for any YouTube channel. If you subscribe to a channel, make sure to click the notification bell next to the channel name or next to the subscribe button or wherever it is on the screen. Click that notification bell. If you don't, what basically happens is uh, when you click the bell, it means that every time they upload a video or start a live stream, you'll get a notification. At the very least, it will appear in your subscriptions tab. If you look at your YouTube page on the left hand side, you've got a menu of like the things you follow and all that kind of stuff. One of the options is subscriptions, and that's all the channels you subscribe to. You get a feed of all the stuff they've uploaded every day. I check it every day. Um, if you don't click the notification bell, you'll never get told when something goes up at live or when a video gets uploaded. But you'll also never see it or not very often see it on your subscriptions tab. So if you do if you do follow a channel, mine or anybody else's, and you like their content and you want to know when the content goes up, make sure to not only subscribe, which is obvious, but tick the notification button bell thing. It just means you've got a better chance of seeing when your favourite creators put stuff up online. Uh, Josh Hollinshead said, did you use Agrax the Shade or Norn Oil? Um, I'm guessing you didn't see last week, so I'll quickly tell you what I did. This was primed black. Um, it was sprayed with UMP airbrush primer because I didn't have any Chaos Black, but Chaos Black Rattle Cam will do. It was primed black. Then we brushed on some. We gave it a good coat of Castellan Green. Two, it was a two thin coats, obviously, of Castellan Green. <clears throat> now, I wasn't too worried when I did that if they were a bit patchy here and there because we want some weathering and dirt. So it wasn't a perfectly green coat. It's a little bit patchy, but that's fine. Two thin coats of that. Then we went over it with Norn Oil very generously everywhere. If you watched last week's live stream, it's all that's what I did last week. So if you want to go back, you can watch last week's live stream. But we give it a really overall coat of Norn Oil. I mean, I got a big fat brush. I got I got this bad boy and just went with the Norn Oil. I made sure it didn't pool up, but I covered it from head to foot. It took like half an hour to dry. Covered it with Norn Oil. Uh, and then when the Norn Oil had dried... I did exactly what I've, you've just seen me do now, little circular motions, with the same Castellan Green as the base colour. So what we did was, we painted it Castellan Green, we washed it with Norn Oil to darken it all, and then we dry brushed it with Castellan Green in little circles in the centre of the panels to bring back the highlights whilst leaving the recesses still darker. Uh, it, unless, you know, other, unlike just painting the Castellan Green where you get nice crisp edges, this gave us a soft shaded effect. And all I've done today so far is done exactly the same as that but with Lauren Forest. And then once we've done all these bits, I'll do exactly the same again with Strachan Green. But we'll just focus more on the insides. And if anyone who wasn't at the start is watching, 
the colours I'm using, if you go into the Citadel app, it is actually in the green colours. So if you go into paint by colour, green, moss green, it's moss green. I'm using Castellan, Lauren Forest and Strachan green. The only difference is I didn't use Ethonian camera shade. I used normal oil instead because <coughs> I wanted a quite dark effect. And I'm basically trying to show you how to get this kind of, this is what kind of a pre-shaded look without actually using an airbrush. When you pre-shade with an airbrush, you start with a light color primer, paint in or airbrush in some dark areas where you want the shadow to be, and then you airbrush over the, the, the main color of the model. We're doing the same thing, but we're doing it all with brushes, so you get this nice faded effect. Now it does look, like I've said, it does look a lot more stark on telly when you're looking at it. It doesn't look that obvious. In real life, it doesn't go dark, light, dark, light. It's not that obvious in real life. It's, you don't forget on the telly, you, know, you look at the telly screen here, it's a bit overblown, there's a bit overexposed, there's a bit of contrast going on. So it doesn't look that overblown in real life. Once you get some weathering on there and other colours, it'll look fantastic. So I like to try and show people how to do airbrush techniques without using an airbrush. <clears throat> uh, let's have a look. Uh, what's happening? Uh, Gus Vickers, what is the name of your chili on allrecipes.uk? Says Candy Grand for Mongo. Uh, apparently, there are 142 names of chilies on All Recipes UK. Chris says Graham, Brett. Uh, Team Inep says JS Idaho, are there food options other than chilies and a mobile gas station a short walk from you? <laughs> uh, there's also an Italian restaurant with a French name that I'm ignoring on principle. <clears throat> I need to clear my throat one second. I hate to say this to people because I know that I'll, I'll lose a load of viewers now, but I don't like Italian food. I mean, I don't mind it. I don't mind Italian food occasionally. I just don't like Italian restaurants. Why? Because they're kind of, I just find Italian food kind of, for the most part, kind of boring. I know it's lost a load of followers now, but I just find Italian food, a lot of it, just kind of boring. I don't, I've got my own, I love pasta. If I'm hungry and I can be bothered, I'll rack up a load of pasta and some sauce and have it for my lunch. But when you go into an Italian restaurant and you pay money for food, it's kind of boring. It's not, it's not the most exciting. So I would, yes, I would walk past the Italian restaurant. I wouldn't go in. Uh, right, so we've got some stickies ready. Uh, what is chat doing? Do Paul Di Tommaso is in? Welcome, Paul. Uh, Speedy Kuwait says, "What's that? Stickers? Oh, hi, Carl. <laughs> yes, I don't know if I don't know if I've not got to the end of the chat yet, but it'd be really funny if Carl is here because our good friend Carl from Making Models, he has this wonderful, wonderful, a purely accidental habit of um, he doesn't plan on it. It just happens to be every time, delightfully, that he he usually comes into a stream halfway through. He doesn't often start. He's not there from the start quite often because he's doing other stuff, but." He often comes into the stream like say two thirds of the way through, but it always seems to be just when people are giving away stickers. So we have this ongoing joke now, and we hope that Carl takes it in good faith because it's just a little gentle, gentle ribbing. <laughs> Whenever you mention stickers, Carl turns up. We love you, really, Carl. Uh, it was in Warrington that fox. Oh yeah, Eileen Bilton. That was Warrington. It, it was Warrington. Ring Eileen Bilton on O five. No, I'm sure it was an O five hundred number. That's Liverpool. O five hundred, five hundred. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, I may have to I may have to whiz across a lot of the chat because I'm so far behind in it. So apologies. Uh, my Italian fiance just scoffed at the telly. Model making guru says Cy Reynolds. I'm in trouble now, aren't I? I'm in trouble. I should probably re I should probably clarify. I'm not saying that Italian food is boring. I'm saying that Italian restaurants. If I'm paying for a meal, if I'm going out and paying for a meal, Italian restaurants are kind of boring. Don't, I love an, I love a nice bolognese. I'll, I'm one of the few things I can make is bolognese. But restaurants, I've never found an interesting Italian restaurant yet. I, at my local Japanese restaurant, you go and sit at the hot plate, and they're juggling eggs, and the the guy can actually juggle rice. He juggles rice with spatulas. And your mind is blown, and they're, they're at the hot plate making the food in front of you. It's fantastic. Italian restaurant, boo, just sat there, boo. Man comes up with his enormous pepper mill. And there's cheesy Italian, fake Italian music playing. And everybody's being really middle class. And it's like, wow, this is like being at the library. It's not exciting. The only place I used to... There was one place I used to go. And I, I would always love to go there. Because it was the worst Italian... It was like the cheapest food ever. It was like... It was like... How to explain it? It was like just... 
I don't know. It was just like uh, the most un-Italian Italian restaurant. And it was run by a guy named Mario, oddly. And if you asked him what the soup of the day, because it's in the menu, it's a soup of the day. And if you asked him what the soup of the day was, he would say the same thing. He'd say, he's minestrone. He's always minestrone. It was always minestrone. It doesn't matter what it's soup of the day was. And he'd, he'd always say, he's minestrone. He's always minestrone. He'd, it was his kind of trademark. He'd always tell you that. So, And that was quite a good restaurant because it was kind of cheap and cheerful. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Gaz Vickers. Does he say what the name of his chili is? Okay, Gaz Vickers says, if you want to find out his recipe for chilli, uh, you need to look up, um, on whatever website it was that I've forgotten now, what it was called, at allrecipes.uk, his chilli is called Tasty Family Chilli. Look for the member Vickershaft, the member name Vickershaft, and it's Tasty Family Chilli. So the ingredients are a tasty family and some chilli. <laughs> um, so I might actually look that on myself to be honest although it involves cooking I'm allergic to cooking I love eating I hate cooking it's boring Tasty Family Chili on allrecipes.co.uk uh, Team Inep says one day I'm going to put Carl in a timeout at sticker o'clock that's just cruel uh, Warmaster Fluffy says hello everyone welcome Warmaster Fluffy you're more than welcome you just turned up in time for stickers you may be the new Carl uh, Chris Smith, afternoon, sorry I'm late see, see, I bring stickers, everybody else turns up now Apart from Carl, it's just the whole trend has been booked Because we mentioned it He does take it in good faith He says, yeah, we love Carl really uh, I have an Italian friend who not only Dislikes Italian food, she hates cooking also uh, She says, and I quote Spade or JCB Fox, keep digging <laughs> Awesome Awesome, excellent Uh she finds it hilarious that I like Gino De, Camp uh, Gino De Campo's recipes. Apparently, he's the over-enthusiastic Italian male chef is a ten a penny there. Yeah, it's a spid. Um, Space Hamster says, So what I've learned today is that the English are doing Italian restaurants wrong. Here in Switzerland, they're awesome. You guys probably mistreat your Italians or something. Uh, Dad's posted a YouTube link for something. That's the Alien Bilton ad. Oh, cool. Just remember to keep this stream going while you're watching the Alien Bilton ad. Oh, everybody in the UK should recognise that ad. She's still going. She runs her own business now. I think she actually runs a development company. It's not bad. You start off as the t the receptionist that everybody knows the name of because you're on an advert, and you've got to think about it. Um, the place where she was working, where it was like you know, phone Eileen built and on. How crap is it that this entire development company had one person answering the phone? It's a bit bad. Probably didn't, but and now she's running her own business. Cool. Uh, Dad says, Carl is watching rugby. Sport's boring. Carl, going to miss out. Right, anyway, shut up. Stick of time. Move the water out of the way. It's stick of time. I have the pen of white writing happiness things. Uh, and I shall do my usual three words. We shall have... Um, I shall, on this one, I shall write... Water bears. I like tardigrade. Tardigrades are awesome. On on this one, I shall write moss pigs because that's also tardigrades. Uh, and on this one, I shall write tiny creatures because that's what moss pigs are. Yay! If you don't know what tardigrades are, where have you been for the last a million years? Go and look up tardigrades when this stream is finished. They're awesome. They're awesome. They're the most awesome thing in the world. They're just awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Right. So as always, we have three stickies to give away. I will quickly check. Um, Paul Di Tommaso says, don't like Italian? Blasphemy! <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I hope I've clarified it. It's the Italian restaurants that suck, not the actual food necessarily. They just make it boring. Uh, so it's like the same way that Chinese food if you go to a Chinese restaurant in England it's not really Chinese food you're having westernised if you have proper Chinese food it's incredible a proper Italian food it's probably awesome but we just never had it uh, right so let me just check if we've got any emails uh, things uh, nope I don't think so no 
Okay, so none of you said anything, so I need to make up three questions. Okay, so water bears. All I can see now is Baywatch with bears, says Earl D. Our water bears are awesome. I love tardigrade. Tardigrades are just so adorable. Right, three questions. Okay, uh, let's have a think. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, first one, make an easy one, so you've been paying attention. Uh, right, first one. This thing I'm painting. I base coated it with Castellan Green. And then I applied a shade. Which shade did I apply? Go. I'll put the pen away and I need it to write the name of whoever wins it. Idiot. I forgot to tell you to refresh the browser window and drag the slidey thing. Don't forget to refresh and drag. <laughs> okay, well, the first person to actually get it right was Cynical Mank with Null Oil. We had Bulb Oil, Null Oil, and Mulm Oil. <laughs> yep, Null Oil. Cynical Mank, you were right with uh, with Null Oil. Null, it's oil from the city of Null, apparently. Um, so while you decide which sticker you would like and tell us in the chat, we'll sit and stare at you. The half site says Bulb Oil is awesome. Yeah, I like to oil my bulbs. Space Hamster says, I thought you were supposed to throw shade, not apply it. No, you throw shapes. Uh, so everybody just stare at Cynical Mac for a minute while he decides which one he wants. Good old autocorrect, says Adam Clark. <laughs> yeah, I'll have Watre. Uh, oh, yeah, Water Bears. Okay, so that's Cynical Mac. So you know what to do because you've won before. If you win a sticker... All you need to do is send me an email to, where is it? This, I got the angle wrong again. Fox at modelmakingguru.com and give me your name and address and tell me which sticker you want. I'll put that to one side so I know it's yours. Um, but tell me, just say, you know, your name and address and that you want a Scaly Models sticker. If you're waiting, I uh, have got all the UK ones sent out now. All the non-UK ones from the last couple of months are still waiting to go out because I've not had a chance to get to the post office yet. I need to go to the post office and post them. So they're still waiting, so don't panic. Uh, Vamp and Muse, I am sending yours to Dad, and he will then send them on to you. I think that's what I'm doing. Um, if you're in the UK and you're, already, and you're waiting for a sticker from last week, say, just send me another email anyway. If I've got three emails from you saying I've got I won a sticker over the course of a few weeks, then I'll only send you three stickers. If I've got one email, I'll only send you one sticker. I won't know if you've got five others. So every time you win a sticker, send me an email, even if you're waiting for a sticker. Right, so uh, that was that one. Good choice, says Dad. Yeah. Uh, Sal Reynolds says, never mind, I did a stupid when you see the email, Fox. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, so he sent me an email. I did see the email come in. Uh, well, you didn't put an answer in there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't see the stupid in it, though, unless it's a, a fact that I should know and I've forgotten. <laughs> Wait, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll move on from that one hastily. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, right, Scott Sutherland sent you a question. Oh, right. Okay, let's see if that comes through. There we go. Doodle do 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 do. Okay, right, that's a good question. Okay, so now we have... So I forgot to say this before, but before we do the question, refresh your browser and drag the slider. So refresh and drag. Refresh and drag. Refresh and drag. Doors will open. Oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling. Set your seat backs to fold it away. Right, so I'll give you a second to do that. I'll have a swig of coffee. Thank you for the question, Scott. Uh, do you want me to send you a sticker, Scott? Because I'm asking you a question. You didn't include your name and address. I know I can get it elsewhere, but it just saves me hassle if it's in the email. Feel free to send me another email. Just say, send me a sticker, dude. Uh, right, question. You can win either tiny creatures or moss pigs. Question is, everybody ready? Okay, what is the only officially bilanguage province of Canada? What is the only officially bilanguage province of Canada? Go. Now, Scott, you put a comma after that and then the answer, and I nearly read the rest of the sentence. <laughs> what is the largest state in America, Texas? Nearly did that. Didn't quite, though. Uh, right, so uh, what is the only officially bilanguage province of Canada? Now, I don't check these. Remember, I don't check it. I just assume the person sent me knows what I'm talking about. It's, oh, Scott says, no, thanks. It's okay. I've got loads. 
Dallas says gross models. Oh, Ted is like having Ted here. <laughs> Uh, Cy Reynolds gets it with New Brunswick. Well done, Cy Reynolds. Uh, would you like moss pigs or tiny creatures? Everybody stare at Cy until he makes a decision. So yes, it's New Brunswick. It's the only bi-language, uh, officially bi-language, province of Canada, apparently. I am reliably informed. I've got the burps. Ooh. Everybody stare at Cy. We're going to sit here quietly now for a minute. Moss pigs. Good man. Reynolds. There we go. Well done. So you've won yourself moss pigs. <sighs> awesome. Send me an email. You know what to do. Email address fox at modelmakingguru.com. Name address and which one you won. That leaves us purely with tiny creatures. What kind of creatures are the best creatures? Tiny creatures. Handy tip for you. When it comes to summertime and you get nice weather, or if you're down, if you're down on the other side of the world, now it's in summer, at some point, just take a minute to go outside in your garden and just look and watch some of the tiny creatures that people about in your garden like little little ants and bugs and snails and even little tiny spiders go and watch little creatures in the grass and the plants just spend half an hour it's the best way to de-stress unless you live in australia in which case every single one of them will kill you so don't do that don't even leave the house but outside australia if you just want to chill out for half an hour it's nice weather outside go and watch little tiny creatures doing their tiny creature things it's a real great way to just chill out in a nice garden environment uh let's have a look alaska's about three times the size of texas it's um yeah, to, the, the, the joke as to is it's an old reference from um an old quiz show called bullseye where the, the host read out this is what is the largest state in alaska texas in Canada, wherever it was. What is the largest state? He read the answer out as part of the question anyway. It's an old joke. Uh, right, so we've got one left. We've got tiny creatures. Uh, I shall pull a question out of my ass. And the question is... Oh. Um, question is... Question is... Uh, Alex Guy says, The continental US is what counts. Hey, why do I see my hometown above? Says Jeff Longman. Have you just come in, Jeff? Welcome. Uh, we we're asking which is the the question for one of the stickers was which is the only officially bi language um, uh, uh, whatever uh, things of your I can't even get my words out. Somebody explain the question, please. I've forgotten it now. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes, let's get the one. So we need to come up with a question. 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 Oh dear. Right, anyway, here we go. Question. It's a Warhammer question. Everybody ready? Uh, there is a Primarch, a, War, uh, a Warhammer 40k Primarch, who is associated with and has his own Citadel paint colour, which is a blue. What is his name? Go. He's a Primarch, and his name is on a, a blue paint. Who is he? Oh, well, he sent me a question, but I've just asked it. We'll keep that one for next week, it'll do. Zasta says, great magic super. Damn, I could have won a speedboat too. Uh, and Cy Reynolds gets it right with Gulliman. Yes, it is, in, in fact, Gulliman Blue. Well done. McCrag is a place, not a, not a Primarch, unfortunately. Um, Space Hamster. Gulliman, Robote Gulliman, or as everybody knows him, Robot Girly Man, which I much prefer. Robot Girly Man. So there you go, Sai, you've won another one. Send me, if you haven't sent the email yet, say you've won two stickers. If you have sent it, send another email. You know how it works. <laughs> well done to everybody for winning stickies. Yeah, I like giving stickies away. Now, don't forget, of course, like I've said this, oh, Sergeant Bose, hello. Um, Gully means manhole in German, for your information. That sounds wrong. I only know TK Maxx a spid. Sarge says dad. Didn't hear the question, so Dave says Gaz Vickers. Oh, sorry, dude. Uh, there we go. Oh, man, missed it all, says Sergeant Bones. Fail. Um, what was I going to say? I was about to say something then. What was I about to say? Can somebody just tell me, go back two minutes and tell me what I was about to say. Oh, yes. Don't forget, um, as I've said a few times, the Wheel of Giveaways... Uh, which is our thing where we give away cool kits and prizes and stuff. That is still on hiatus at the moment, purely because, um, and I've explained it before, the cost of shipping those prizes out is actually quite high for me. And I don't, I've got, I don't get a lot of income, so 
it's just on hiatus for the moment while I'm getting myself sorted out. Uh, and we will bring it back. I've still got a big box full of all the prizes. Those of you who've sent me stuff to give away as the prizes, I, I adore that fact. They're still sat there in the box. They're not going to be used for anything other than to give away. It's just right now, I haven't got 40 or 50 quid to ship out a big master grade box or something twice a month at the moment. Just at the moment. So they're on hiatus just for a bit. I've still got the graphic set up. Uh, let's see if it works. Does it work? Where is it? Oh. Right, so it still work. I've still got that. It's just it's on hiatus, so don't panic. It will come back. I'm just not sure when yet. We're getting there slowly. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, I will let you have the Eiffel Tower to give away for a question prize. Winner will have to go to France and collect it in person. Yeah, I've got I've got a bridge in London. If anybody wants it, go for a good price. <laughs> Right, so what's next? Uh, we have done all that first coat, or the second coat, with the uh, Lauren Forest. At least no girl called Lauren. Do a good laugh. It is quarter to five. So we shall do the next coat. These brushes should be dry by now, I should suspect. I'll give a blast with the hairdryer if I need to. I think. Uh, a quick blast with the hairdryer, one second. There we go. Shouldn't really hair dry your brushes, but hey, it's live telly. What do you expect? Cut all the corners. Uh, I'm just going to refresh the chat so it's up to date. Because I think I'm lagging a bit. Right, so now we do the next colour, which is Lauren for uh, Strack and Green, even. Get the right colour. Strack and Green is our next colour. And again, if you've not been watching, uh, I am following the moss green colour in the Citadel painting app. Moss green. Uh, in reality, he was blow drying his beard, says Sergeant Bones. Yeah, with my beard so big at the minute, every time I take a swig of coffee, half of it just stays in my moustache. So I've got a piece of tissue over here for the coffee cleanup duty. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are following the moss green colour scheme, but unlike, uh, instead of doing like edge highlights with the two highlight colours, we're not. We're just doing dry brushing with all three of the greens. Because I think it makes a, oops, knocking the camera, it makes a much more interesting colour scheme. I'm not a big fan of the edge highlighting. So you can see we've got a little tiny bit of paint on the brush as always. Get it off on the tissue. I don't know how this will come out, so we'll try a little bit first of all. I always like to try a little area first. Just to make sure it's not going to come out looking like complete gash. Try a bit under here. And we want to go even more subtle than before now. If I can do it so I can see it. Where are we? We don't want a big splob of colour. We don't want to really cover an area as big as we did a moment ago with the middle colour of green. So we really want a smaller highlight area. I may go just as far out, but I'm going very lightly outside the central area. So I'm going a bit heavy there and it's a bit of a blob of paint. So I need to fade that out. Okay, so now I know this little test panel has sort of taught me how the paint handles. Because if I go too heavy with it, I'll start making a really clean looking tank. It'll look nice and clean, which is not what I want. But you can see here, it now looks nice. It's got this like green highlight in the middle. It looks a lot, compared to how the tank originally looked <clears throat> when we started, which was that kind of dark green colour. That's how everything looked when we started. Then we added the Lauren Forest and it looks like that. And now adding the Strack and Green, we get into that, which looks nice and light green and has this fading around the edge that suggests dirt and dank gunk and everything. And that's the kind of green we're looking for, is that's a, a real sort of Xeon green. If you look at if you look at some of the, the UC hard graph kits for some of the Principality of Xeon vehicles, they're often that kind of light green colour. And that's what we're looking for. Remember, if you're not if you didn't watch this at the beginning and you're not seeing one of these before. I am building my Warhammer army, the unending forces of the Holy Contrivance. But the theme of my army is the Principality of Zeon from the Mobile Suit Gundam anime universe. And if you don't know, there is a whole, I made up a whole lot of fluff as to why there are Zeon vehicles in the Warhammer universe. There's, I've actually made up fluff in my brain to explain all this. And it's quite clever, I thought. So there you go. So, and if you haven't watched one of these before, you've not seen the earlier episodes, 
what we've done so far, what I've done so far. Uh, here is the plan. Amongst other things, we will have the bog standard Astra Militarum, the grunt troops. These guys will be painted like Xeon grunt troops. So the vehicles will be in shades of green. Their uniforms will be mixtures of greens and dark greens and some sort of yellowy greens. Uh, they'll have brown boots. The boots will be like a brown leather colour and some other colours. We might have some of the guys painted up to be like Tristar ace pilots. This is for the Grunt Astra Militarum. Uh, we, have, we have some Tempestus Scions. They need painting up. And they're being painted up in red colours. And I'll explain that in a moment. They're being painted up in reds. So all the bog standard Astra Militarum vehicles will be in these shades of green. There'll be some variation. They'll all be the same. But they'll be in shades of green. I'm going to have three knights. Three Imperial knights. I built one. We're going to have one painted up to look like a Zaku. And that one's already built and painted. That one is all rusty and dirty and covered in mud and dust and horrible. It's all painted in greens and it's got lots of Xeon markings all over it. That's a that's going to be a Zaku. Bog standard cheap grunty suit. There'll be a, the other two knights I'm going to get built. One will be painted up like a goof. So it'll be all in shades of blue and it'll have Rambaral symbol on it. And it'll be a little bit weathered because it's seen some use but not horribly weathered. And then last of all, we'll have Char's Zaku, Custom Zaku. And that will be painted in shades of reds. And that will be nice and clean. It'll be a clean Imperial Knight. Now the Tempesta Scions, being the elite crack troops, they'll be painted up in shades of red to match. They'll be like, sort of partnered with Char's Zaku, Char's Imperial Knight. So they've all got like nice red uniforms. Their, their outfits are actually painted to look like Char's. So they've got red uniforms. <clears throat> Uh, white gloves and boots and they'll have gold trim but hey it's not really kind of char but they'll have gold trim because why not uh, and they'll have silver helmets so they'll they'll be aligned with him i might come up with something to fit with rambaral's color scheme maybe now i do have at my disposal when it comes to those imperial because the other thing i've got built so far as well i have built and painted some um Skitari range. I've, I've done a squad of Skitari range and painted those. They were basically painted as bog standard Skitari, but with green rather than red. The idea being that they're one of those like groups of Skitari that they, they leave Mars and they align themselves with these guys, the Zeons. So they're still, you know, in the Imperium, but they're kind of they've taken on the colours of Zeon because they're working with the Zeons. Um, what was going to say? I was going to say something. Um, brain, 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 not working brain. Yes, I have at my disposal when we're doing the Imperial Knights. I've done one, so I've done the, <clears throat> I've done the Zaku. That's done and painted. Uh, the other two, I have the Shapeways 3D printed Space Wolves Imperial Knight head and feet, which give your Imperial Knight a proper Space Wolf kind of wolf head. Instead of the default, <clears throat> it's clear my throat. Give me one second. Sorry about that. Instead of the bog standard Imperial Knight head, it gives it a space wolf head, like a, a space puppy head. Uh, so I've got that, and I was debating whether to put that on either Ramba Rals, but I don't really know why it would be on Ramba Rals. I mean, basically because it's painted blue and it looks really good. That's kind of space wolf colours. Uh, either Ramba Ral on his Zaku or. His Imperial Knight, or put it on Char's, just because then it would be Char's Zaku, and it would look kind of like a ridiculous bit of decoration on Char's Zaku, which of course is the best Zaku in the world, and is better than the box standard Zaku, and therefore that's why it would have the big wolf head. I don't know yet. I'm not decided yet. I may take feedback from the audience as to which one deserves the space puppy head. Doodle 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 doo. -doo, -doo, -doo. Uh, so yeah, you can have three Imperial Knights. Now the problem I've had is I've never actually played Warhammer. Not yet. And the problem I've got is that I keep building and painting all the units that I don't have the codex for. <laughs> and that I, haven't, I keep forgetting to download the codex. Because I'd rather have a hard copy of the codex and stuff. But So this is why I'm doing these guys now. And I've done my Tempestus Science. Because I've got the Astra Militarum codex. And I've got... Um, 
<clears throat> I've got the armored armor of the Imperium Codex, which is I've got for my um, Death Corps of Krieg. I've got a squad of Death Corps of Krieg that I need to build up and paint. So my hope is that at some point, once I've got these guys finished and when I've got my time, my silence painted up, I can actually get down to my local store and get learned how to play the game. Because when I started doing Warhammer, I just started out doing Warhammer because the models were cool. But as, I've got, as time has gone by, I've got more and more intrigued by the actual game itself. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, I really want to actually try the game out. I might, I might hate it. I might not like it, but it might be awesome. And I don't know yet. So it's gone from model maker to actually wanting to play the game. So that is what I will have to do. I hope you can see here how this light green is really making this come alive now. And again, there will be weathering on top. So again, keep in mind, it looks a lot more stark on your telescreen than it does in reality. This looks like it's a, de a medium green with lots of light green patches like there and there. It doesn't look that bold and bright when you see it in real life. And once I get some dirt and weathering on here, it'll all blend together. The important thing when you're doing any kind of paint scheme like this, especially with this technique, uh, are you doing different, different colours in multiple layers? The trick is not to get discouraged in the early stages because these things never look like they will when they're finished, when they're halfway through. I learned this when I did lots of drawing and painting as a kid. Everything looks terrible until it's finished. And it doesn't make sense until it's finished. So don't lose heart and think, oh, it looks, the, the, the green's too bright and this is too bold and that doesn't stand out right. And it looks fine. It looks fine. So you can see so far we've gone from this, the dark green, so dark and lifeless, to that with the medium colour. And now we've added the light colour, which has enhanced it even more. And we're just adding to the shadows now. With this colour, although I'm focusing mostly in the middle of the panels, I'm doing a fair little bit of brushing over the edges as well, just to soften if I need to. If, this, if the contrast in real life to my eyes is too dark between the light and the dark, I can just soften it a bit by going over the darker areas, just a tiny amount, really, really lightly, just to lighten it a bit, and it helps blend it together. And again, it's little circular motions, little circular motions. So I'll get this side done, and then we'll have a quick look at the chat. And if you're not looking to actually weather your models, if you, when you, you know, there's all the thing you can do is, if you're not actually looking to have a heavily weather models, I am because I do weathering, that's what I do, that's what I'm known for. If you just wanted some nice looking models to put on the tabletop, and you weren't going to go for the whole, you know, dirt and dust look, maybe you're just going to dry brush some dirt on it and that'd be it. that would be fine, nothing wrong with that. But you can still use this technique to, even though you're not weathering it, to give it some depth and shadowing just to make it more interesting. You could go heavier on the light colour here and really fade the dark bits away. It would just give it some depth and give it that pre-shaded look. So it would look like you'd spent a lot of time airbrushing carefully when in fact you haven't. You've just dry brushed the whole damn thing. And that's the beauty of it. A lot of making models and painting models is using simple, easy, straightforward techniques. So people think you've done a lot of work when in fact, you haven't. I mean, th there are techniques you can use to put in a lot of effort to make a beautiful model, and of course you can. But when you're making for tabletop, you're not making museum quality builds. You're making builds that you can turn around quickly enough to get them on the table and playing with them, and that they'll withstand the rigors of tabletop play. So things like dry brushing, they're brilliant little techniques. But you can do a lot of work and make it look like a massive effort without actually doing the massive effort. And a lot of model making is just learning where you can take those, not necessarily shortcuts isn't the right word, but using the techniques, straightforward techniques to look like much more complicated techniques. Because to get this kind of shading with an airbrush, I mean, it'd be smoother than this. It would look much neater and nicer, but you've also got to be careful where you're pointing the airbrush. You've got to really carefully apply your pre-shading coats and your, your coats over that to make sure the shadows stay where they are and to make sure the shadows are consistent. With this, it's a lot more hat packs, just little circles. I'm not being thinky about this at all. Thinky is not what I do. What I do is eaty. Eaty and sleepy and painty, that's what I do. Admec in general are harder than you think. I'll, talk about, I'll come to that in a minute then. They're talking about um, 
Belisarius, Coal, and Admech, and things like that. I have got my little squad of Skitari Rangers. They were quite fun to paint. They were quite fiddly, but they were quite fun. But they required a fair bit of filling, because they've all got great coats. There was a fair bit of filling had to go on on the gaps in the great coats. So a fair bit of sprue goo was utilised on those chaps, but they look great. They don't look as good in green, actually, as they do in red, but they still look good. But they do kind of work better in red. But hey, I made up fluff. I don't care. I look forward to the day one day when I've got all my stuff on the tabletop. And one day, because if I go to the Warhammer store now, nobody in the Warhammer store that I go to knows anything about Gunplot or Gundam or anything. They're just, they're like, I've never heard of what. But it'd be great one day to be there at the tabletop. And I put my dudes on the table. And the person I'm playing might be like, was that a Xeon symbol on that night? I'd be like, yeah. they would be like, whoa, cool. Because so I've got a bit heavy there. But you know what? That's fine. Because it's going to get weathering on the top. And it just looks like maybe somebody's smeared away. The oil and dirt and dust. It's fine. It's not a problem at all. Happy accidents. Some light patches, some dark patches. It's all part of making this look random and varied. If everything looks uniform, if it's light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, that's boring and obvious. If you make it random, the occasional bit where you've gone, oh, I've gone too heavy on that colour, it's, it's fine. It's random. It's natural. So, yeah, it'd be cool for somebody one day to be like, that an Imperial Knight got a big Xeon symbol on the side. Yeah. Why? <laughs> but, you know, they know what it is, so I can explain the fluff and they'll be like, okay, cool. Heavy, there we go. Always start off light when you do your dry brushing, so you know if you've got too much paint on, you've not suddenly covered the whole thing in the in the colour. Always start light, and then you can back off from it. If you go in too heavy straight away, you can't back off from that. You can't get rid of too much paint. Little circular motions. It's quite funny once when I was. Uh, At one point I was in the, when I was first starting to go to my local Warhammer store and get to know the manager there at the time, he kind of vaguely knew what Gunplay was, but he didn't know much. And I was explaining to him what I like to make and stuff, and he went, oh, you'd like Tau then. This is like a Gundam, because I went in one day and said, we've got a kit for you, it's, it's, it, you might, you're like your Gundam, so yeah, here's a, here's a ghost keel. I'm like, yeah, okay, I can see that. I'll give you props for that. Give you credit for the, for the, for the link. Uh, Space Time says, yes, I like the Skitari fine, but like you said, fiddly and the gap and then cloaks. It's, if you if you do it with the Sprugu, it's not actually that bad. You get good at using the Sprugu, it's not that bad to fill. Like I did with my uh, librarian and the Warhammer Conquest thing. Actually makes it a lot easier. Using Sprugu makes it a lot easier. And I found the easiest thing to do with the Skitari was not assemble the torso to the legs until you've painted inside the coat and stuff. It sounds really obvious, but a lot of people actually, like, you watch Duncan paint it, he assembles the whole guy, and it's like, really? Because I ain't getting inside that back of that coat without painting everything. So, yeah, just don't don't assemble the, the top and bottom half together until you've actually, you know, um, painted the, the torso. Leave a little bit free. Because what I did was I mounted the torso on a cocktail stick in a fork, and same, and but the legs I glued to the base... And the torso, I drilled a little hole and mounted it to a cocktail stick with some PVA glue uh, and then stuck that into a cork. And that allowed me then to paint the torso inside and outside without having the legs in the way. The legs were just glued to the base. Get the legs painted up and when they're ready, just glue them together. Kept a little bit of the torso inside free of paint so I could glue it to the feet, to the, to the lower torso, obviously the lower body. All good fun. I did enjoy painting them though. It's mostly metallics, and you can't go wrong with metallics with Games Workshop colours, with Warhammer, uh, with Citadel colours. I can hear my doorbell going lots, and I think that's because Mama Fox is changing the battery in the doorbell. <laughs> that must mean the doorbell's been charged. Our doorbell wasn't working, and we reckon the batteries had gone. Yeah, there it goes. No, it won't turn off. I can hear her shouting and she's like, shut up, shut up. She's shouting at it now. <laughs> she, there you go. She, she keeps pressing the button. <laughs> she's probably pressing the button while she's trying to get the battery in the box. <laughs> I love it. Shut up. She can hear it downstairs. Shut up. 
bless bless mama fox so i've got no idea what i was talking about now i've forgotten anyway it's all gone i shall have a look at chat in the moment i'll just get this bit of dry brushing done now the thing to keep in mind here is when you're doing this last layer of color you will tend to get a bit more grain to the paint when you're doing this and this is inevitable purely because the first coat of paint you do like the castellan green i did you've just got a nice smooth primer layer and then the paint layer brushed on top so you're going to get a smooth finish the second layer the um lauren forest we did over the shade that's going to be smooth as well to a certain degree because the shade layer was kind of smooth because you brushed it on when you get to this point you're dry brushing on top of dry brushing so the lauren forest was dry brushed on and now this is dry brushed on and every time you dry brush you have a little bit of texture there a little bit of grainy texture but it's not too obvious with the circle method but now we're dry brushing on top of other dry brushing you will start to see a little bit of grain in no matter how careful you are you're going to get a little bit of grain in the paint there's no way to avoid that no way to escape it or you can really just minimize it by keeping your circle your little circle motions quite small and again don't worry because i'm going to be doing weathering over the top and that will hide the texture and grain even more so don't worry if you start getting a little bit of grainy texture. I can see some there. It's inevitable when you at this point because you're dry brushing on top of other dry brushing and you're going to pick up the grain, highlight the grain from that last dry brushing coat. I mean, if you wanted to get really because of anal about it, you could do that dry brushing coat and then uh, you know gloss varnish it and then dry brush over that. But there's really no point to do that because at the end of the day, it's a military vehicle. It's probably got a hastily applied paint job. It's going to be covered in dirt and dust by the time we've finished. Nobody's really going to know. It's going to be seen from that far away on a tabletop. Nobody's going to notice. Don't sweat it. You're building a tabletop model. It's not, it's not imperative. Uh, Space Time says, you know another downside of airbrushing? I can't be watching this stream while I'm airbrushing. Missing, I have to check out now. Bye all. Thanks for coming in, Space Hamster. Thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully you watch the rest later on. Yes, you can't do much else when you're airbrushing. <laughs> Unless you're um, Bjorn, in which case you can do a live stream and airbrush at the same time. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't watch the live stream last night, one of the highlights was um, the fact that I realised that I can get people in the live stream, actually in the stream, to do pretty much anything I want them to do. Because they're completely at my beck and call. <laughs> I was like god of the lab. I was like king of the lab. I can get you to do anything. So at one point I was asking everybody to make the noise that an A10 uh, warthog makes when it fires its gun. So everybody was doing their best A10 warthog gun impression. Including Bjorn, uh, Bjorn who actually had his mask on at the time. His respirator. And we said right make the noise. And he went in his, and it, it sounded fantastic. Because, but then he had to set, take his mask off and kind of wipe his face because he just basically spat all over himself. But yeah, it was good fun, that. It was good times last night. If you didn't join us, or if you're not familiar with the Model Makers Boom Hut, just so you know, because we're going to be doing it for another few weeks, the Model Makers Boom Hut, uh, if one of the mods could please post a link in the chat for me, uh, the Model Makers Boom Hut is a Facebook group for model makers. Uh, and it's a really friendly place unlike some other groups where it's all snarky and bitchy and people just get really nasty and everything it's a really nice friendly place it's carefully curated to not be full of snark and bitching we don't tolerate it if somebody's like a snarky rivet counter or a bit of a, a bit of an ass we kick them out we don't let them stay it's not wanted so it's a really nice safe place to hang out it's great fun uh, and we encourage people as much as possible you know, to develop their hobbies. It's it's all about people learning. I do my YouTube channel to teach people how to do what I do. And the Boom Hut is the same idea. It's just set up so that you guys can teach each other how to do what we all do. Uh, and it's a really fun little environment. It's nice and safe in there. It's, it's great good fun. Great good fun. That's not even real English. Um, and we're doing a group build at the minute, which is basically... Uh, well, it's, we have a thing called Mopelmacken. There's a lot of fake pigeon Dutch in the boom. Don't worry about it. It's just the way it is. Um, and this year's Mopelmacken is you have to get a starter kit, a really terrible, horrible, nasty starter kit 
that comes you know the kind of kit that's like 10 quid and it comes with paint a few small paints and a couple and a couple of brushes and a tube of glue and it's horrible because it's some old kit the company can't sell otherwise and you can only use that and some very limited tools and what we're doing is we're doing a live stream every saturday just for the next few weeks where some of the boom Hut members are actually doing a build themselves oh sorry the admin team for the boom Hut are doing the build themselves uh, and other members are joining in as well but what we're doing is we're actually letting members we've never done it before but we're actually letting members join the live stream rather than just be in the chat and that's cool so we're getting to hang out with you guys and uh it's quite good. We've got a few more weeks to go because I mean Ted's not finished his yet. TK's finished his. TK's one of the admins from TK's models. He's finished his. Chris finishes one a night basically. <laughs> He's done a TIE fighter and a snow speeder and a, a tank so far. Um, Chris is seemingly finishing one every night, uh, but Ted's not finished his yet. So we've got another couple of weeks to go, I think. Yep. Yeah. So we're doing that on Saturday nights at eight o'clock. So do check in next Saturday. Remember, if you, if you subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, you'll get a notification when the stream goes live. Yes. Doodle, 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 do. Now, I can't stop doing this dry brushing to do stuff in chat because, um, like I said before, I don't want this dry brush to suddenly dry out while it's sat there for 10 minutes. Because then I have to rinse it out and start again. So I'd rather get the dry brushing bit done first and then we'll do some chat. So I'll get this bit finished, and then we'll see what chat's doing. <clears throat> and that should take us to home time then, I think. It's that time when I ask everybody, what are you going to have, or what did you have for your dinner? I don't know what we're having tonight. Uh, last night we had, it was a sourdough pizza with basically just mozzarella and tomato. Which sounds really boring, but they're actually really nice because I'm a meat boy. I like meat. I like meat on my on my food, and it sounds like just it's just cheese and tomato. But it's like you get the cheese and tomato base, and then slices of mozzarella or little discs of mozzarella, uh, and little tiny cherry tomatoes cut into halves, all over it. And then what I do is I took a spring onion, and I chopped it into fine. I, f I finally chopped the spring onion and sprinkled it all over, and then put the thing in the oven, and it's got a nice, refreshing, sort of clean, crisp taste. And it's quite light as well. It's quite delicate. You eat it and you, once you've finished it, you don't even feel full. It's quite refreshing. So we had that last night. Uh, but I don't know what I'm having tonight. No idea whatsoever. Because Mama Fox was going to do a slow cook. She was going to do a slow cook uh, this morning. And put it on throughout the day. Because she likes doing a slow cook. A bit of, we've got some beef mince and she put some veggies and things in there and all that kind of stuff. But she completely forgot. So it was like, oh, no slow cook tonight then. Oh well. So we'll see, we'll see what we're going to have tonight. I'm not sure yet. We have to go rooting through the freezer and see what we've got. We made you take out. I do not know. So what are you guys having for your tea? Or if you had your tea, what did you have? Tell me in all the words, describing with all the juiciness and all the, all the, all the writing, what you had or what you will have for your tea. And make me very, very hungry. This is where everybody, I think my streams will end up with everybody getting really fat because we talk about food all the time and it's just good times, man. There you go, it's coming out quite nicely now. It's looking a bit lighter, see? Compared to that, it's like day and night, That look at that. If I could get the light on it properly. It's like day and night, you wouldn't know, would you? Not finished yet, but what we've got left to do now, we've got the top here and we've got the dozer blade and we've got the under area, the undercrackers. Yeah, that is the undercracker. Yeah, that is good. With the little fiddly bits. Gross model says I shall be doing meatballs and spaghetti. Cy Reynolds says that the missus says aha Italian. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't say it more than I have already. It's Italian restaurants I don't enjoy. Italian food is all right for the most part. There are some boring Italian dishes. It's, it's, it's Italian restaurants that are boring. All food is good. Italian restaurants are boring. I think Italian restaurants are boring because they take themselves too... In the UK, because they take themselves too seriously. You walk into any Italian restaurant, they're all trying to really hard to be a, 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 a serious... Like, oh yeah, a proper restaurant. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And they're either ridiculously overpriced for bland food, or they're just like a dive, but they take themselves really seriously because it's Italian and therefore arty-farty. 
Whereas in reality, it's it's just Italian food. It's not, you know. So and the, the food you actually get from them is never gourmet. It's just like yeah, it's some pasta and a bit of sauce, and there you go. Brilliant, thanks. Well worth the money. The old, they're just two. The two. You went to a Chinese restaurant. It's just a Chinese restaurant. They make you some nice food, and they're always dead friendly, and you have a good time with your mates. You went to an Italian restaurant. I don't know. It's just. I don't know. It just—it's really weird. They're very—they're always very middle class, and you feel like you're in trouble. And it's like everybody talks really. Nobody wants to speak loud. They all talk really quietly in Italian restaurants. All like, yes, we have to talk quietly. Apart from the one family in the corner who've got like three, three young kids who are maybe like eighteen or nineteen. And it's not—they've not been drinking long, and so you know they've not been able to drink alcohol for very long. Maybe an eighteenth birthday, and they make a little bit of noise. But everybody talks quietly. It's like—it's like—it's like being in church almost. But with better food, with food, I don't know. There's something just there's something about the atmosphere of Italian restaurants that just doesn't do me any favors. And they always make the food really, food really mediocre. I know Italian food can be nice, just nobody makes nice Italian food in restaurants. It's like we had a local French restaurant, a uh, local restaurant. It's not there anymore. It used to be around. It was supposed to be quite a renowned restaurant. It was a French restaurant, um, and the food was just bland and overpriced. And it was like, really? Because French food can be fantastic. And you walk in and it's like, you'd order something. And it was basically, the menus would, if you didn't know it was a French restaurant, you'd be surprised to find out it was. Because a lot of it was just boring regular food. They just put the names in French. It was like, really? And they were just, it was really boring. And horribly overpriced because it was all poncy, the restaurant. It was like, really? Like, you know, you could order like a big bowl of moo mariniere. So There's a big bowl of mussels, basically. And it was like 20 quid. And you were like, it's just a big bowl full of mussels in a bit of a garlic sort of seasoning and stuff. It's not it's not that spectacular. You just seriously buy a bag of mussels from a fishmonger for like, I don't know, a few quid. And that, you, you're done. So, yeah, but Italian restaurants, I don't know. It's just, uh, Italian food's fine. It's just the restaurants are boring. They're like, they're like church. It's boring. Ugh. I don't mean, I don't mean good church. I mean boring church, like Anglican church or, ugh, ugh, it's boring. I'm going to get some of this paint, this light colour up in the bay. Dozer blade. Now, remember like last time with the last colour? I wasn't careful here because this is going to be heavily weathered and you can't really see down there. So it's more just making it obvious stands out what you can see stands out to the eye so i'm not being careful on the dozer blade at all there's been a lot of weathering on there and chipping and dry brushing of metallics because that gets a battery so i'm not really worried about that too much not really taking care of that one that one i don't care about too much cynical man says i went to bella italia last night fox it was very nice indeed because it was a chain restaurant uh -oh. Was it slightly poncy and did it feel like a bit like going to Sunday school? Because I bet it did. Unless it's in Manchester. If it's in Manchester, then it's kind of trying to be... It's, it's trying even harder to be even more poncy, so... I don't know. For what food you get, I, I, I don't know. It, it's never exciting enough. I think. As, the issue not the food, it's the restaurant. At this point, Cy Reynolds' missus is just never going to talk to me ever. I'm just never going to get out of that doghouse, am I, basically? Uh, does this galaxy count as food, says Quano Man. Absolutely, bar. Absolutely, bar. Absolutely, mate. It does. Uh, that's a big chucky bar, not just um, all of ex existence. <laughs> yeah, I'm eating the galaxy. Uh, Afternoon Fox is still trying to paint that chimera, says Athol McNichol. Uh, yes, we're on our third base colour coat. Which is, uh, we've done Lauren Forest today, and we're just doing Strachan Green. All using the same method that we did with the base colour, which is a sort of circular dry brush, just to get the highlights going. Get your highlights going! Now a lot of this will be covered up by the turret, so I'm not being too careful here. 
I want to get some some definition in there. It's a fingerprint there. The other thing you'll spot when you do this when you do this step, if you've got any fingerprints in your paint or your glue, <laughs> yeah, you'll see them now. You'll see them now. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> We'll just get this bit done now i might be end up st sticking things on here like bedding rolls or stuff like that and accessories so i'm not too fussed what this bit looks like again though there will be weathering on top there'll be paint chipping and other things coming here so there are a few bits where it's a bit patchy but i'm not fussed because there's, there's stuff to come that i can use to cover up there's another fingerprint there good god fox what were you doing when you painted this I should have worn gloves really when I painted the base coat, but I didn't. And now I'm paying the price for that. I'm paying the price bigly. So this bit here is a bit patchy, but A, there'll be a turret over here, and B, I'm going to put some you know, chipping and weathering, so it's fine. It's all gravy. I just want... All we're really doing is building up the shadow effect it's a long round the houses way to get the same effect that you do with airbrushing with pre-shading so that ultimately it's a mixture of the two lighter colors the lauren forest and the strachan green that is the actual color you want the vehicle to be and the original base color the castellan green is more of the shade shadow area color so you, if you want to get a good shadowing effect, never start with the colour that you want the vehicle to actually be. Now, old artists will tell you, in any form of art, you should never work from dark to light. And you shouldn't really. But in this situation, it does actually work. So you can see here with this bit, I don't know if it comes out on camera, but this bit here is a bit more grainy and textured. Because again, we're dry brushing over dry brushing. But again, I'm not fussed because I can put lots of weathering on there and hide lots of things. Weathering and chipping will always hide all your sins. Keep that in mind. Like if I made a boo-boo and just put a big splob of paint there, that's fine. I'd just turn it into a paint chip later on if I had to. There's always ways you can recover goofs. Goof, goofs. Let's go to the big brush. Big brush. Big brush. It's time for the big brush. Oh, actually, no. let's do this. Oh, I'll do that in a minute. I'm muttering to myself. Ignore me. Big brush. Squishy, squishy. But now we go underneath, yeah? Into the undercrackers, yeah, that's his thing. And again, this bit here, I'm not making it too beautiful down here or too careful because this is going to have a lot of dry brushing for dirt and dust. And I might do some powders, but I might not. Because it's going to be tabletop play. I might just stick to dry brushing dirt effects and dust effects rather than actually using powders and things so this i'm not too delicate with i'm not being too neat and tidy with this bit i can go in with a bigger brush and do it a bit faster uh cynical man says no really it was quite down to earth lots of lovely telling restaurants in my native wales as well though being it seeing it's been a while hang on you're native wales but you're the cynical mank it's just mind blown that's too many that's too many conflicts there then again if you're not native to Manchester and you move to Manchester you'll become a cynical manlock quick enough it's 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 inevitable if you live in Manchester Manchester yeah uh, I'll, I'll let you off actually because yeah it doesn't take long to actually become a cynical man <laughs> yeah before anybody complains, I'm complaining about where I live. So I'm allowed. It's allowed. Nothing beats mince and tatties, says Athol McNichol. Oh, yeah, mince and, mince and, well, mince and neeps and tatties. Oh, yeah. Neeps and tatties. What kind of fish do you guys usually use for fish? I'll get to all the chat in a minute properly, but I'll just, things that I'm picking out on this particular screen. What type of fish do you guys use for fish and chips? Asks Paul Di Tomaso. Um, it depends on the fish and chip shop, but most of the time it's cod, it's battered cod, it's cod in a crispy batter. It's a big fillet of cod, bones removed, it's a big massive piece of cod. Now it can vary 
because sometimes it depends on what's available to the fish and chip shop and sometimes you know fishing quotas mean they can't get as much cod so sometimes you'll get hake which is actually nicer i prefer hake to, to cod so hake's quite nice uh and i think that sometimes you will get other fish as well but a lot of times it's cod and cod's just really i'm not a big fan of fish but the one type of fish i will eat is fish and chip shop fish because you never ever get any bones in it and it's in a batter which is quite nice because fish is just too fiddly for me i want to, eat, to put things in my mouth and eat them and fish is just poncing about and fartiness and if you've been watching the way i paint things for long enough you know i don't do pontiness and farting about i do the quickest simplest method of anything so eating fish yeah Fish. I want fish and chips now, actually. Oh! Every time I do a stream and we talk about food, I end up wanting a particular kind of food by the end of it. Uh, but yeah, it's usually cod, but it can vary. You get uh, some fish and chip sorts do place. That's like a flat fish. But that's usually as a. That's not instead of cod. That'll be like you can have place and chips or cod and chips. Uh, some of my locals did do hake for a while. Hake's fantastic. It's got a real nice flavour to it. Hake's gorgeous. Uh, Pollock is a big one these days. Says, oh yeah, Pollock. I forgot about Pollock. Uh, Pollock's quite nice actually. Yeah, it's quite. It's quite a, a bit of a stronger flavour than cod. Cod's quite a nice flavour, but it's quite a gentle flavour. Cod's kind of like cod's kind of like the potato of the sea. It's not offensive in any real way. You can't really not like potatoes. So cod's kind of inoffensive, whereas Pollock's got quite a nice flavour to it. Yeah, I forgot about Pollock. Doodle, 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 little last tussage on here just to get some edges I might have missed. I'll do some real stabby dry brushing on these edges just to get some little scrapey, scrapey marks. Just helps to build up the idea. Because when we do paint chipping, we're going to be using lighter greens uh, and some metals and rust colours. So it doesn't do any harm to do a little bit of stabity stabity edge dry brushing now to get a few scrapes in there in your Strachan green. Just to start start the process off. Because if you can do scrapes and scratches in lots of different colours, it just makes it look even more convincing. So we'll just jab it on there, we'll scrape it across there. This bit's gonna be metal anyway, so it doesn't matter. We'll get some stabity stabity going on. Get some on that edge there. Just gives it a nice varied effect. There we go. There we go. Lots of lovely colours. Right. And I think this will conclude. And you can see this, this technique is so flexible. I can go in with a big fat brush and just gently go over that. And it's fine. It works. It looks great. It's not causing any problems. You don't have to be neat and tidy with this. Don't have to be neat and tidy. I might end up, I, don't know, I might leave that missile, that cut, I don't know yet. I've dry brushed it now, I may have all shading and everything, so I may as well paint a bit of it, but not all of it. Keep most of it green, maybe, I don't know. This is just the base colour, remember. There's lots of other things to paint. So I think that is going to do us for the three base coat colours. Uh, let's have a look. I'll just get the brush rinsed off. Then we'll have a look at chat. We'll see what you think. Time we're on 1724. Oh, nice. Vietnamese river cobbler tastes fantastic, says Earl D. Ooh, yeah. Can we get that in a fish and chip shop? Foxy, every time you do a stream, the topic goes to food, says Scale Model Muse. I know. Um, I don't know if you're in when I said, but I do need to send your stickers for you and Vamp to Dad, by the way. What's pinging? Something's pinging. Is that my phone or is it my iPad? Don't know what's pinging. I don't know. Uh, right, so let's put that there. Have a quick look. So what do you think, guys? I've not painted the turret yet. Obviously, I've got to do that as well. But remember, it does look a lot more stark on telly. I've said this a few times now. It looks a lot more stark to you guys on telly than it does in real life. In real life, it's a lot. the blending is a lot softer. The fade between the light and the dark is a lot more shaded, and the dark isn't quite as dark, and the light isn't quite as light. But remember, this is just the base colour. So on top of this... We have all, we've got to paint the tracks and other bits and bobs. We have all the details to paint. We've also got to do some chipping. We've got to do some, maybe some streaking and some other weathering. We've got chipping and rusting to do and lots of other effects. Metal, bare metal and stuff. So this is just getting the base green down. And I'm, I'm, quite, pl I'm quite pleased with that. I think I'm really pleased with that. That's quite nice. And in reality, that would probably have been a few hours work. 
You know, you could get one of these painted up like this in a day. So if you're looking to paint your army and get, you don't want to get the airbrush out, or maybe you can't airbrush. Maybe airbrushing is not for you. But you want to get a nice, interesting, varied text that isn't just green with a recess wash and then some highlights. You can try this. It's just dry brushing. And all you do is small brushes and circles. That's it. And go lightly and build it up. Uh, but there's lots more to do. And this will all blend together once we put more weathering and stuff on there. So let me know what you think. I, I'm quite pleased with that. I'm quite pleased with that. You can see the difference now with the turret compared to what the turret was, hopefully. This has got no, no, the only pre-shading that's got or post-shading is the original dark green, which is much darker. So there you go. That's how you build it up from a dark colour to a light colour. So uh, let's have a look at the chat. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, no, no, no. Everybody's eating stuff. David Butch, that model. Welcome, Dave. Says, she who farts in bed is cooking a monster fry up as we speak. I hate you, Dave, because now I want a monster fry up and a chip, and chip shop takeout. I shall be doing meatballs and spaghetti, says Chris at Gross Models. Om nom nom. Uh, steak, ale and mash with turnip for dinner tonight, says Athon McNichol. Oh, steak, ale or oh, turnip. Bit of neeps. Oh, mm. um, chips and fish, I think, says Richard Champion. Or oh, fish and chips, as we like to call it. Uh, <laughs> when asked about what kind of fish, when Paul asked what kind of fish, Dad's entire response was cod Paul. Is that cod or cod Paul? <laughs> Is that like not real Paul? Uh, Paul de Tomasa says the shops here offer cod, halibut, oh halibut, yeah I forgot halibut, halibut and Alaskan whitefish. It's not often you get halibut over here, but you do. It often depends on just what is available. Like we have various shipping quotas, shipping, fishing quotas, and sometimes the, the fishermen have to lay off the cod to let them restock, so they go on to other stuff. So that then feeds back into the fish and chip shops. And sometimes, you, sometimes the cod is out of season, they just don't fish it, so you have to get other things. But it's quite nice. Uh, Paul Di Tommaso says, I agree, Roman Catholic Mass is boring. Well, Anglican Mass is boring, Roman Catholic Mass is boring, but you also get depressed as well. Uh, up here in Aberdeen, it's Haddock Chips in Beer Batter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, Dad loves Pollock. Fox, I've uh, done that one. As do was selling it last year, not seen it for a bit, says Earl D. Ooh. Hake is a lot cheaper than cod at £9 a kilogram, says David Butch, that model. And as cod is £18 a kilogram at work this week, I would not touch Pollock with a barge pole. Ooh, Dave's a butcher. Which is not a fishmonger, but technically same counter. I don't think I've... Have I had... Actually, I have to think that. Have I actually had Pollock? I don't know. Maybe I have. I can't remember. I must have done at some point. Uh, Pollock wouldn't touch you either, says Dad. Kevin Pollock, Jackson. <laughs> Um, let's have a look when I was in Hawaii years ago says Spid uh, I tried a fish called Mahi Mahi which was delicious I found some on Aldi about a year later but I haven't seen it since in supermarkets uh, JS Hyder says looking great thank you very much uh, even looking at this now I, I can see the green is a bit too bright it's a bit too chaos however once I've, once I've dry brushed some or once I've applied some dusty effects like dust and dirt things it will start to blend together. So if you are doing paint along or if you're painting anything, remember these are just the base colours for the base green colour. When you're halfway through a project, it will always look you'll always look at it and go, oh it's not working. Don't panic. Just carry on and see what happens. Because 99% of the time something will look like ass until it's finished. So trust me on that. Uh bear metal again. No, says Earl D. Please welcome Slipknot with special guest Yogi Bear. Hey, hey boo boo. I don't know these lyrics, they got rewards. Well, I don't know, Yogi. Uh, seriously, about five of us would go out and get a bunch of fish of all types, says Sergeant Bones, and the next day grill it and all the neighbours would bring side dishes. Oh, yeah. Spid says, in Hawaii, snorkelling was incredible, though. Lots of beautifully coloured fish swimming right by you and some really weird sea tree ones. Uh, I've, I've, although I'm, I'm, I, I can't swim very well, I have been scuba diving twice. Once a training dive and the second one was a dive dive. And it was the most amazing thing ever. I will never, ever forget it. Um, diving down and seeing like um, rays coming up from the bottom to greet you and moray eels and stuff. All kinds of big, massive fish. It was amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Most ex amazing experience I've ever done in my entire life was scuba diving. Uh, okay, well, I'm really hungry now. I'm really talking about food. I sort of shot myself in the foot there because I'm an idiot. Uh, let's have a look. 
Paul DiTomaso says, Chris builds his starter kits like a true impatient seven-year-old. Gotta have it done now. Uh, Mew says, just about lunchtime here, Foxy, and I can't think about food until after coffee. It's true, coffee comes first. Uh, Paul DiTomaso has got his uh, shark kit here with him. He's still working on it. Jolly good. Fox, have you tried the Windsor and Newton varnishes in place of the more expensive modelling ones? Asks Beyond Hope. You mean like the Galleria and stuff? Um, I haven't. I have been told they are very, very good. The only reason I haven't is at the moment I haven't actually needed to buy any new varnishes because I've got tons of the tons of the uh, ammo ones here, and I've got quite a few cans of Humbrol uh, Forty Nine rattle cans. Um, so at the moment I haven't needed to get some. I might try some because I've been told the Galleria stuff is actually really nice as a matte varnish. Um, and the only two things I really look at is if it's going to be a tabletop playing model, it needs to be durable. If it's going to be a shelf queen, it's going to sit on a shelf and look pretty. I don't care if it's not very durable. It doesn't matter. It's just got to look matte, basically. So I'll probably get some at some point and check it out. Uh, enough people have told me to try it out. So As for gloss varnishes, like I said before, the only time I ever gloss is to do uh, the weathering. Maybe for decals sometimes, because I've got to seal decals in. And then do weathering on top. So I don't do shiny models. And uh, the pledge works fine as a dry, a brushed on thing. So it's fine. It's fine. Uh, missed anything else in chat? <laughs> All right, we have just one about Agmet, weren't they? So let's have a look. Uh, Butcher that model says, uh, So tempted to buy a Belisarius call, not that I want an Adeptus Mechanicus armor, I just love the look of him. Uh, you, you basic answer is you should. Uh, Alex Guy says, The 1144th Neo Xiong is 930 millimeters tall, it is a monster. Monster. Beyond Hope says, isn't the 1144 Saturn V rocket almost six foot when assembled? Chris must be one two hundred and eighty. I don't know what the conversation was. I think there was a conversation about Chris being tiny again. Oh, somebody said that I Chris, I didn't see you. He says I'm being very quiet. And that dad says that's because he's one one forty fourth scale. <laughs> Bless him. Chris is actually not that short, but we like the, the whole reason we say that Chris is tiny is not actually that tiny. He's about the same height as me, but um, Chris and Paul sent me, well, one of them sent me a photograph once, and Chris and Paul go do archery. They do arrow flying, throwing things. And they sent me a photograph, and it was Chris um, getting a big bear hug from somebody in their archery class, who I think they call him Hodor. And this guy is like about 18 foot tall, but in every dimension. He's like a big, he's kind of just like Hodor, but I think that's, if I remember right, Chris, tell me if I'm wrong, or Paul, I think you told me your nickname for him was Hodor, because he's just this big, massive bloke. And it was like, Chris was stood there, and like, this bloke was that tall, and Chris was there, like, getting a big bear hug off him. It was like, Chris, big, tall bloke. It's like, and it made Chris look about two foot tall. So from then on, we've always, like, mocked Chris a little bit. Looking at this missile, I'm not happy with the finish on that. I have to repaint that, paint over that. It's a bit too grainy for me, that one. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to paint over it anyway. But I'll probably repaint that in different colours. Um... The Belisarius model looks awesome. Go for it, Dave. Yeah, if you if you like the look of a kit, Dave, just get it. I've got all the Warhammer stuff I've built that I'm never going to play in a game, but I just like the look of it. Um, Belisarius call looks nice, but also like a nightmare to paint, says Space Hamster. Um, if you watch the um, Duncan's video, it actually doesn't look that hard. I painted the little Admet guy. Um, he's not the big Belisarius call, but it's like you get the you get the Skitari range, and then you get the little sort of HQ, the the priest, the tech priest, and he's actually great fun to paint. He wasn't that hard, so he's just like a big version of him. So it's mostly metallics, which thankfully with the Citadel paints are really easy. Um, so I'd, I'd go for it, go for it. JS Idaho, what the hell is a Pangasius? Don't know. Oh, Pangasius is a fish, says Sergeant Bones. Uh, payday of on Friday, says Dave. But Belisarius call might have just fallen into my basket. Good girl. Space hamster, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Uh, right, what's chat doing now? Wow, chat's done quite a jump there. Uh, real thing about the surgeon fish, it's got bone blades in its tail, sharp as scalpel, used it to cut plastic, says Sergeant Bones. Wow. Shouldn't it be called the stabity fish, then? A better name for it, the stabity ouch fish. 
Uh, hope you didn't sneak up and spear the fish while they were performing surgery, Sarge. Uh, do do Earl D says, put my Sazabi on a pedestal now and everything I decide on don't feel good enough. <laughs> Sergeant Brown says, no, he didn't He didn't spear one from behind, but he almost had surgery done on his hand from one the first time he caught one. Speedy QA says, absolute silence, please. This bit of surgery is crucial. Ah, someone stabbed Dr. Fish. Uh, never use gloss to place decals. Instead, use microsol, says Athel McNichol. Uh, no, I don't use gloss to place decals. Um, some people will put a gloss coat down before doing decals to give a smooth surface. You can do. I, I, I used to quite a lot. I don't really as much now. Uh, but if it's a particularly rough surface, I will. So I'll put a gloss coat down. But what I'll often do is, like for example on this, what I might do is it might be that I want to do uh, some like enamel streaking or pin washes. So what I might do is gloss it all first because I need to gloss it anyway to do pin washes. Then I'll put some decals on. Then I'll gloss over the decals again. I'll just gloss it over to get it all done. And then I'll do my pin washes and other things that need a, a smooth, shiny surface. Um, I don't really tend to gloss, to, not anymore. I don't tend to do a gloss. If I'm just doing decals, I'll usually just put them straight onto the paint. And then I'll gloss. I'll seal them in with the gloss if I've got some streaking to do later on. But if I need to, if I've got like this whole thing and it's got to do a pin wash and it's got one decal there, I'll just gloss the whole thing. I'll stick the decal on. I'll gloss over that bit again, and then I'll do my pin wash because I've got to gloss it anyway for the pin wash. Um, but yeah, for uh, decals, I use Microset and Microsol. Uh, there was a spiny-backed flatfish, a guy on a pier in San Diego caught, which I got a photo of once, and then I said, can you hold it up for the pick? He was like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Scott Sutherland says, Dave and Chris are both short next to me. Have you had shark, Spiddy, says Sergeant Bones. I've had shark, I've eaten shark, it was all right. Dad says, is it uh, Atalanta jackals are ready for paint? Uh, Atalan, or whatever they're called. Dad's making the um, Gene Stealer dudes on motorbikes and they look mint oh. i might save up and get the big off-road truck thing not the goliath the new one when it comes out the little sort of uh, uh oh, i can't get my words out it looks like a humvee i won't paint it gray though because gray's boring uh just realized says muse i just realized my warhammer shop is three years old on march the 9th that means special game pieces will be given out yes do it but they also have sometimes this stuff that's in the back that they can't sell like maybe it's been damaged or the box has been opened or there's a piece missing they often give that away as little prizes and like you know raffle prizes so go and check it out i haven't i have had octopus squid and several other odd fishes but never sharks says spit i've eaten squid i've eaten octopus uh i've had shark I'm not a big fan of fish. Ooh, I like that fox. Stabity fish, stabity fish. Ooh, spess hammer, says Spid. Um, Matalan... <laughs> Spid says Matalan jackals. Yes, from now on, Dad, your Atalan things are known as Matalan jackals. In the same way, I've got Primani marines. Primani space marines. You've got your Matalan jackals. Sounds good. I shall link that to the must-eat list. That says Spid. Cool. Right, well, I think what we're going to do, because I'm done now, I'm, there's nothing else I'm going to start now, because um, we'll leave it there. I don't, I'm not sure what's next. Detail painting, probably. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I've got to paint that bit. I'm not going to get that done in 20 minutes. Uh, we'll call it a show, I think. It's a bit early, but there's nothing more for me to do. Uh, I'm just kind of reading out chat now. So what we'll do, we'll call it there, call it a show. Uh, thank you for watching. Do let me know in the comments if you're not watching this live or if you, even if you are, what you think of that so far. If that's been helpful, uh, let me know if this technique's been helpful to you because I, I find it a great way to not have to get the airbrush out and yet get a nice sort of pre-shaded effect. Keeping in mind, like I say, if you're following along with this build and you're doing it yourself, there's more stuff to come that will make this look more make more sense. It'll blend it all together and bind it, in, bind it and surrounds it like the force. So, you know, let me know what you think anyway in the chat. Um, I will be back next Sunday with more. We'll start on some of the tracks and the detail painting. I'll, I'll start planning what bits I want to do. I th I'll probably leave the figure till last. And I might just paint the figure off camera when it's all done because it's kind of fiddly. I don't know yet. Uh, but until next time, uh, obviously, uh, keep an eye out tomorrow because tomorrow is the E-Models live stream. Now, Ted's... E uh, wow, words... Start again. Ted's broadband was off last night. We hope he'll be with us tomorrow on the model stream. Otherwise, it'll just be me and Chris. 
So do keep an eye out for that. Uh, I am working on the next or the first installment of the little tiny teeny U-boat build. <clears throat> so that's going to be up hopefully in the next few days. Once that's done, it'll be time to join to start on my big fat Sazabi and do some of the Warhammer Conquest stuff. So all that's to come. Um, don't forget, as always, if you'd like to help support this channel and keep this channel going, because I do depend on you guys to help me help me keep doing this every day. It's my it's my job. Uh, you can pop to patreon.com forward slash model making guru and help out if you'd like to. There are various ways you can help out. One of them is through Patreon. You get various rewards for being a Patreon supporter. Some exclusive content. When the Sazabi build goes on, it will be a Patreon exclusive build. Uh, I'll do little sort of build diary videos for non-patrons, but the actual build videos themselves will be Patreon exclusive. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't, if you can't do that though, don't worry. The other ways you can help out, uh, you can just subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Subscribe and hit the like, uh, hit the notification bell, so that it makes sure you're notified every time you get a video. Uh, and if you are watching, if you don't have ad blockers or anything like that. If you can sit and watch the video at the start of any of my videos, it just helps me out a great deal because I get a little bit of cash for that. Um, I get the bonus for that. So if you do have an advert on one of my videos, just sit all the way. It's only 30 seconds. It's not the end of the world. You'll be fine. It helps me out a lot. You're doing me a big favor if you watch the advert. So thank you for that. Um, again, stay tuned in the next day or two for an announcement about the 20,000 subscribers. I will be giving you an amazing prize or doing an amazing prize giveaway. So stay tuned the next day or two. If I can get it done later on, I'll do it later on. But I'll do that later on, maybe. Stay, you're going to love it. It's going to be an awesome, awesome prize. So just keep an eye out for that. Thank you to all my subscribers. 20,000 subscribers. That is insane. Like I said before, I don't think I get 5,000. Never mind 20. Let's move on. to Let's, let's see if we can get to 100,000. That would be just incredible. But thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed and watches my shenanigans. I love you all. However you help me out, even if it's just watching adverts, I love you all. You're all awesome. Thank you very much. And don't forget, of course, last of all, if you want to go along, do go and join the Model Makers Boom Hut, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut. It's a really awesome place to hang out on the interwebs. And lastly, don't forget, at 8 o'clock tonight, 8 p.m. GNT, if you want some more Warhammer happy times, Chris over at Gross Models, my good friend Chris, uh, on his channel, does his Warhamster Sunday uh, from 8 p.m usually for an hour and a half, two hours. He's working on his Torox Prime. So do go and check out. Like, go and have your tea. Now we've finished here. Go and have your tea, whatever that may be. Uh, and then come back and watch Chris's on his channel, Gross Models, at 8 p.m. for his Warhamster stuff. So anyway, that's going to do it. So thank you very much to everyone. Thankfully, I don't have millions of buttons to press now, so I can do the close down a lot better than I used to. So thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you all tomorrow for the E-Model stream. But in, until then, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. You there, you there with the eyes and the face. I can see you with all those eyes. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoeba. Wait. That was the wrong one. Adios amoebas. What can I say? I'm an idiot. Bye!